Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here to play the epic, but not as epic as War of the Ring, but the epic board game, uh, the Battle of Five Armies, based in the Hobbit book universe, uh, Lord of the Rings, that kind of thing. Um, it's the epic battle that happens at the end of the, the Hobbit book, or the Hobbit movie, I guess, too. Um, yeah, this is a cool game. Uh, it came out in 2014, I believe. We'll look at the BGG stats and stuff in a sec, but a uh, little story, a little background on this, this game. Uh, we got this game day it came out, added to the collection. Uh, and it's kind of funny. I know if you've been around the channel recently, you're probably thinking I'm crazy and I'm living in the early 2010s <laughs> based on all the games we've been playing lately. Uh, with um, Lord of the Rings, LCG, uh, we're playing this, Star Wars Imperial Assault, all these games that came out like, you know, early 2010s. Um, and this is no different. This harkens back to uh, the early days of me getting into the hobby back in 2012. Uh, I, War of the Ring was one of the first games I grabbed at my first Gen Con. I haggled for it on the Sunday, got it, and then just never got it to the table. It's very overwhelming. We've played it since on the channel. If you're looking for the War of the Ring playthrough, uh, you came to the wrong stream. Uh, I should have linked that down below, but I didn't. But just search Rob's Gaming Table War of the Ring. Uh, I'm sure you'll find that playthrough. I'll try to link it down there uh, later today. So if you're watching this in the future, you should be able to find that playthrough down there. But this game is by the creators of War of the Ring. So as soon as I heard that they were coming out with this game based on The Hobbit, it's a, a more zoomed in, but still follows a lot of the same rules. It's the same rolling dice, taking actions based on the dice. It's dudes on a map, area control, all, all this stuff based on an IP I love. I grabbed it day one. Mel and I learned it. We played it. We practiced it. We, print, we were spending time on the BGG forums back in 2014, but that was before I was doing this full time. And we were very focused on it. So we were also playing like Game of Thrones, the, the card game at the same time and traveling to tournaments. And that was my primary game that was taking up all my time. But we spent a couple of weeks like playing this game. We probably played it like three or four times and we were preparing to record a video that I would then edit and post a playthrough. Mm -hmm. But here we are in 2022 and I still haven't done that yet. Well, we're doing it now. Yeah, so we're now finally doing it. Uh, so we basically played it, practiced it, got ready to film it. And then just things came up, life, tournaments, other things we were focused on at the time. And it's still a meaty, complex game that it's like something a few weeks pass, a couple, a couple months pass, we start playing other games that we're like, we got to start that process again of like learning it, getting ready for a video and all that stuff. Because at that time I took it even more serious where like I had to be able to pass like a, an exam on the rules 100% with the players playing at the table or else I would kind of not play a games on camera. I was kind of like that way. Um, we just said, ah, we'll get to it later. And as every year passed, as new games came out, this game just kept falling to the wayside. It's known as not as good as War of the Ring. It's not as popular as War of the Ring. But I like it because it's a little less complex, I feel. The rule book's thinner. The rule set's thinner. The board is smaller. Uh, the playtime is usually shorter. So it's like just a, if you want to get that same feel of War of the Ring, like the same dudes on a map area control, still rolling the same kind of dice and doing actions and all that kind of stuff. Um, it feels very similar, but just condensed. Obviously, it can't hold a candle to War of the Ring. War of the Ring's just so epic and crazy. Um, but if you're just looking for a two player game battling against each other with the same kind of rules, you could probably learn this and play it in the same time to read the rule book of War of the Ring. Um, just kidding. Not, not that easy, but. Yeah, this is just like a more zoomed in version. So you'll see today we'll play through it. I'll explain the game a bit at the beginning, kind of an overview of certain aspects of the game so you can understand and follow along. Um, and what I learned, there's not many videos out there for this game. I started searching like to kind of like see if I was getting the rules right. Uh, but I basically had to spend a lot of time on BGG, kind of like going through the rules forms just to make sure I was understanding everything okay and looking up some things the rulebook kind of wasn't filling in. But the rulebook basically answers like everything. Uh, and we're playing with an original edition. We're playing with an original edition, which we'll talk about more on why we're even playing this right now. And we're not playing this right now because it was on my list to ever play again. I was just going to forget about this game, never make a video of it, um, but there's a reason why. But hello, everyone in the live chat. Hello hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Welcome. Just want to answer one question, Yogi. I did not paint this. No. No, no. No painting on this game. No painting on this. Um, yeah. Yeah. The colors of the uh, miniatures are colored based on a faction, and they're very small, and they're not the best quality. And the plastic they're made of is not the greatest either. Um, and, and 
ones that I've seen painted online, they never look that great because the miniatures aren't that great. They're just small, the detail's not that great on them and stuff. I mean, Melk would still paint them and make them look awesome, I'm sure. But it's not the kind of game that I need to be painted. War of the Ring, I would love to be painted. But again, because the miniatures are colored, um, the, the side of the faction, except for the characters. Maybe the characters being painted. Yeah. That's the only thing I wish, like, kind of. A couple of the characters are very tiny. They're like, yeah. uh, they remind me of uh, Destiny's size. But we can talk about, yeah, we'll talk about <laughs> yeah. the miniatures when we're down to the table. I'll kind of yeah. explain that. But, uh, but no, I did not paint it. Yeah, it's the kind of game that, like, uh, we'll pull it and play now, but like I don't know when I'll play it again after this. Like you know, because it's a two-player competitive game, so you have to have another player that's willing to kind of like learn it and play with you, and like you know, it's like and, and be a challenge. So it's nothing that you should ever play solo. Um, but all the videos I could find, <laughs> like literally every YouTube video I could find of this game being played to try to like learn it or or understand what I was reading in the rule book to just confirm a few things, I couldn't find. I maybe there is one, I just couldn't find it in my searching. But like every video I ever found of this game is one person playing against themselves you don't think what, that's the intent of this what game are you at doing all? <laughs> like i picture like two-face like it you know as someone who has split personality like sitting there like <laughs> you know playing against themselves like talking on one side and then like running over to the other side of the table like haha i'll get you and Haha, watch this card i'm gonna secretly play for my hand i gotcha oh my god like it, yeah, yeah battle battles though please please don't buy this game to try to play with yourself Playing with yourself is not something, you know, sometimes you have to do it, um, but it's not something you should, you should, you know, there's lots of games out there where you can play with yourself all day, and uh, it's totally fine, but not this game. All right, so anyways. <laughs> uh, but if you have another player that likes playing games like Star Wars Rebellion, War of the Ring, um, like heavier two-player battle games, uh, what else is there? There's other ones. Um, I'm thinking of some fun ones like to play against each other, like Seven Wonders Duel and stuff. Like those are fun two player only games, but those are like way toned down, not as complex, quicker, easier to learn, easier to teach. But if you have someone who sits across the table from you and wants to sit across the table from you for like an hour or so to like kind of learn, play a practice game, and then get it's it's like a two to three hour playthrough when you kind of like kind of don't know what you're doing. But if you know what you're doing with this game, you can play a game in like 90 minutes to two hours, easy. Um, which we were doing uh, after yeah. like our first playthrough. We pretty much get through this one pretty quick. It has a max of like roughly probably like 10 rounds. Kind of reminds me of Game of Thrones, the board game, the same idea. There's a way to win before the round limit hits, but there's like kind of an artificial round limit, which we'll talk about. So the game can never go like in infinite. So if you want to play a battle game that has like a kind of always has an end, um, Unlike some games like Risk and games that could just literally take weekends because they just never end because the mechanics aren't that great. Um, the rule set's not that great. Um, but yeah, this kind of reminds me of that Game of Thrones, the board game second edition that has that like, it could end at 10 rounds and then you check who's the winner or somebody could capture enough castles and whatever ahead of time and end the game early. This has that same idea. So this game could be done fast or take like fairly long, but no matter what you're doing, going through the turns, eventually it will just end. And we'll find, and you'll find out a winner, which is kind of neat. It's just kind of neat. It's only a ten-hour stream, slacker. Get out of here, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it's not, but we'll see. Uh, so let's talk about the game a little bit. Let's give you some background. Um, a little more about it, I guess. The chat is having fun today. Just want no. To say. Hey, they are having fun. Listen, in the chat. Today. No fun in the chat. This is serious, <laughs> serious, historically accurate battles happening here between elves, men, dwarves, goblins, orcs, okay? This is, no fun should be had. This is, this is war, okay? I don't want any fun in the chat or Banhammer will come out, okay? This is serious business. The fate of the free peoples and the fate of Middle Earth is hanging in the balance today. Yeah, please don't distract me or I will lose just by reading the chat and laughing. <laughs> Right. And I would like to win. <laughs> we don't know. It's not a place to hang out and have fun, right? This is serious. We're, we're doing a war reenactment today. This is real, real stuff, okay? <laughs> Erica, tasteful puns, go crazy. Go crazy. Bob says, uh, hey, Rob, get bent. All Bob, right. I hope you're feeling well today. Yeah, Bob. Uh, I'm so sorry that you're not feeling yeah, 100%. I'm, sad, I, I'm, I'm really upset you have COVID, and I, I hope you get through it, but... You know, just just when you're saying things like that in the chat, just knowing you're like not feeling 100% just makes me feel 100%. Oh, 
Also, I mean, <laughs> also happy anniversary. Oh yeah, <laughs> to you as well and your wife. And I hope your wife is also feeling okay. I'm glad you got each other a nice gift for your anniversary. <laughs> you know, the COVID virus. I, you know, that's that's nice. You're doing that together. Yeah, it's, you're having a separate anniversary party today. That'll be something that like is tied forever. They will look back on that and be like, remember that first anniversary? And they'll both be like, let's not talk about that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that exactly. Like, the timing on that's crazy. Aww. But yeah, but I, I hope I, you and your wife are feeling okay. Yeah, I hope you do get through it okay. I'm just joking around. I'm glad um, we can um, we can give you some entertainment today. It's the COVID speaking. <laughs> it's like an, yeah. infe an alien infection taking over. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take that into account when when uh, Bob makes comments yeah, today yeah. that he has COVID and maybe on some additional medications as well. <laughs> I need to use that excuse more often and just be like, uh, sorry guys, I said something bad on stream. It, it was COVID, I swear. <laughs> Like, man, this guy, this guy's had COVID for like three years. What's going on? <laughs> oh, Michael, though, does say a nice thing. Losing his sense of taste, he can enjoy his anniversary dinner. <laughs> oh, <no>. Horrible, horrible. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, my gosh. You guys are too funny. Okay. <clears throat> Back to serious business, okay? So this is the Battle of Five Armies. The original printing's from 2014. But again, I like to play games, even if they're older. I like to play games that are available. They're in print. So I'm not showing you something you can't get yourself easily i'm sure you can find a used copy of this um but it did get reprinted recently which i'll talk about in a sec uh but it is from 2014 i feel like it still holds up today as you'll see today through the playthrough still a great game just like war of the ring still holding up again has a lot of the same dna in it for sure so it's a two-player game best with two of course don't play this solo there's no variant team up rules like in some of those other games where two players play on one side controlling like half the army or whatever this is a war game player versus player it says 90 to 240 minutes. I don't think it could go that long, but maybe if you don't know, really know what you're doing and it kind of stretches and everyone's taking their time and lots of combat's happening, it could slow down a little bit. But I still feel like once you know what you're doing, it's a 90 minute to two hour play. But if you're, if you're two very equally matched and you're kind of like getting different, like bad luck on your dice rolls and not really making any progress. But again, there's that, that fate timer that will expire at the end where like just the free people's player wins if it hits that on the track. And the game is always like that fate meter is always progressing, kind of like threat meters in other Lord of the Rings games we play on the channel. Um, yeah, so it's like that. So age 13 plus, uh, weight is 3.59. So this is not a simple game by any means, pretty complex game. But the rules are okay, but I recommend reading through them twice before even playing once. Because the way the rules are written, they cover everything very detailed, but it's one of those rule books where they mention stuff later, like they talk about things on the map, but they don't mean anything to you until you read about combat later. So then you go back and read about the map again, and some of those things make more sense. So this game is like, it's like a 30 something page rule book, I think. Uh, yeah, something like the 35, I think. Yeah, so it's like a fairly meaty game. 34, 34, because then there's a table of comments. But, but I found from learning it twice back in 2014 and here in 2022, like not playing it for seven plus years, whatever. Um, it's a read through the rule book twice, helped me the best personally, playing it, then reading the sections just to make sure we had it right. And then a couple BGG lookups, but not much considering the game from the time it was and how complex it is. Um, almost everything that I had a question about, I found answers online that then pointed to something in the rule book that if you kind of like read between the lines a little bit, it's covered. Like, so almost everything I feel is covered in there. There's just maybe some card interactions, um, but that stuff might not be the same with the newest printing because uh, we are playing with an original printing of this game. So there might be things that have slightly changed in the latest version, because um, Ares Games kind of does that sometimes, so just keep that in mind. So what I was talking about, uh, announced last year, and this is the reason why I'm playing this on the channel right now. It's not because, oh, we never played it before and I want to make a video of it. Honestly, there's so many games coming out all the time, I just moved on. This game was kept on my shelf because I would have loved to play it at some point, and it's maybe something I would have put on a poll that you guys could vote and we pull out and play at some point in the future. Or with the Lord of the Rings show coming to Amazon, the Rings of Power later this year. This is something I was thinking of saving for playing during around that time, um, which we might still do. So this game might show up on polls. We might play it again later this year. But this was announced last year that it was out of print for years. This game was out of print, hard to find. Um, uh, first hand, you know, like second hand you could find it. But um, they announced last summer, I think it was, that they were reprinting this game with a slightly updated version and with a uh, promotional expansion included for the War of the Ring, um, which we don't have, but they, they reprinted it and then revised some cards and some rules according to this. So it says right here, 
Uh, so this, this was from like September 2021. They, they started reprinting it. So I noticed it started showing up in stores like at the end of 2021. And I was like, oh, it's available again. I want to play it on stream. Let's show it off. And like, it was a cool game back then. Let's see if it's still cool. And uh, then what happened when Lord of the Rings, uh, the living card game re-released, and we decided we want to play the Hobbit campaign, which I have linked down below in the video description. If you want to see us to play the Battle of Five Armies, uh, in card game form by Fantasy Flight Games using the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. Uh, we did that this year. And then I was like, when we started playing that, I was like, perfect. We'll, we'll save Battle of the Five Armies and play it right after we're done that campaign to kind of play the Battle of Five Armies at the end in the card game and then play it in the board game. And I was going to surprise schedule that, but then somebody showed up in those campaigns and was like, you should really play <laughs> the board game. And I'm like, ah, you ruined it. I was already <laughs> planning on playing it. Um, so yeah, so I'm playing it for a few reasons why it's showing up on the channel, not because I'm crazy and trying to play only old games on the channel, which we've been doing a lot over the last few years. We do like to do that, though. Because I still think if a game is great, no matter when it came out, uh, it should still show some love. And as long as the company is still printing copies and it's still easily to grab, I'm okay showing it off and feeling like this is something I want to show you guys that's really cool. But again, this might not be for you. Again, it's a two-player combat game, but you might just have fun watching Mel and I play it and eventually me wind up on the couch as usual. Um, because I'll do some sneaky stuff, I'm sure. But, uh, so this was out of stock for a long time, according to Aries Games here in this article. Uh, and it says it's now being reprinted in a revised edition that includes improvements to the rules and cards first presented in the collector's edition. So they did a full collector's edition of this game, just like they did for War of the Ring, the game that came out two years before this, the second edition. I know War of the Ring's been around since like 2004, but the second edition by Aries Games for War of the Ring they then switched and two years later came out with this based on the same kind of rules by the same designers. Um, but obviously it was popular enough to make a collector's edition of both games. So there's a collector's edition of War of the Ring, there's a collector's edition of Battle of Five Armies. They come with fully painted miniatures, big giant box, uh, inserts to hold all the miniatures. It's crazy. It, it looks super cool. All the cards are oversized. The board is like embossed and stuff. Uh, super high quality production. And I always think those are cool, but I, I just can't justify spending the money on them. Um, but if you play this game a lot, then like, yeah, that's something you might want to hunt down. But uh, the first printing of the revised edition also includes a promotional War of the Ring mini expansion called The Fate of Erebor, a variant for War of the Ring, which allows uh, t which allow to play the game with a different setup, answering the question, what if the Battle of Five Armies was lost by the Free Peoples? So it's kind of cool. It's a different way to kick off War of the Ring and have like kind of like it's a butterfly effect, kind of changing how the game flows based on a weird setup. Um, I don't know if this is available online, if, if you need special cards or pieces. I don't know what this is. Um, I don't know what the rules changes are. I was always curious, but I don't care. We're just going to play the game copy we have. And so just keep that in mind. You may have a copy that has slightly different cards, maybe some tweaked rules. But uh, I read the latest rule book I could find online from Aries Games. So hopefully it's correct. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. So we're just going to play the game, show it off today. But I'm sure both versions are fine, whether you buy the first or second. There's not really many complaints about the rules and stuff that I know of. So I'm not sure what they changed. I, I don't know. If anyone in the chat knows, or you know, are you watching later and you know what is different between the two versions, uh, drop it in the comments. I'm just curious, like, what, what's so different? Uh, but anyways. <sighs> uh, Adam says, uh, do you think you will play Fate of Erebor after getting this? Again, I don't have the latest printing. This is the original printing. I have no interest in buying the newest version to play with that Fate of Erebor. Don't care. Isn't the Fate of Erebor the expansion for War of the Rings? Yes. It's a mini expansion that comes yeah. in the latest printing of this, or at least the first printing of the revised edition, uh, to allow you to kick off War of the Ring with a different setup. Can you buy it separate? Without... I, I have no idea. Oh, okay. Do you don't I really own it, care? so I don't know. Yeah, I don't really care. Like, I have War of the Ring... I think it's epic. I don't play it enough to need like a new start and setup for it. But just letting you guys know that that's a thing. And we're not playing with that today. And I don't care about owning it. But if you're looking for this game, you might be like, whoa, why are my cards different? Why did I get this expansion Rob never played with? Like, or, or doesn't talk about really. But I'm just letting you guys know what's there. But I don't own it. Don't care. Um, but yeah, just trying to give as much information as possible. All right. So this is the Battle of Five Armies. AKA Baby War of the Ring. War of the Ring for toddlers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> baby War of the Ring, that's good, yeah, yeah. Baby War of the Ring, okay? So the board uh, doesn't take up three dining tables worth of space like War of the Ring does. It's just one board 
not two giant boards put together, which is cool. Uh, so this is a smaller game, may not come across on camera. Has smaller cards, so it has like the little board game size cards, um, not even standard. These are like the smaller, thinner, I forget they're what they're called, but I think it's like just a, a board game size they're called. At least all the sleeves for them are called board game size sleeves. Um, FFG uses those size cards a lot um, in games. They're not the mini ones. They're not, they're not mini, but they're like in between standard and mini. Um, just so you guys know. But uh, so that might help you reference how big this is. Uh, these are larger size, kind of like tarot sort of size cards. But I think they're their own thing too. I think you have to buy custom sleeves for these ones. But um... so anyways, we have a map. The map is divided into regions. There are four regions on the map, uh, which could help you guys here. I guess wanna, I, while you're looking for that, give a yep. shout out to Joseph who says, just want to say hi. I've been watching your past playthroughs on the channel and this is my first time catching a live one. Love the way you guys present your playthroughs. Welcome, Joseph. Glad you can catch us live. Joseph, that's awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, here is from the rule book. Kind of this helps you visualize like the different regions on the map. But the map is divided up into these uh, regions, which all have smaller territories. So on the right side, we have the yellow area there. And actually the color of the little tiny terrain circles that you see all over the board there, the color around those circles on the map matches the color here in the rule book. So on the right side, we have the broken lands, which is all yellow. In the center there around the runes of Dale, we have, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, valley, that's the valley, okay? And, and again, like if you've read The Hobbit or seen the movies, this all takes place like just outside the Lonely Mountain, uh, you know, where Smaug was inside the mountain and then the, uh, like a big battle happens outside there. So uh, you also have the Eastern Bank is this blue. That's the Eastern Bank of like kind of like the mountain. And then I think this is like the Lower Spurs or something, Lower, or is it? Southern Spur, Southern Spur is the green, okay? So like I said, if you look at the board here, you have kind of yellow around the rings on the broken lands on the right, the valley has red, and the eastern bank has blue around it. And then this is green, it's dark green, so it's kind of hard to tell, uh, kind of hard to tell the dark green from the blue, sort of. Um, but it's kind of like divided by the river here. Um, so I just use the river visually to kind of like break up everything. Um, but it's kind of cool. So in this game, I am playing as the shadow player, Okay, you know the good guys. <laughs> um, and Mel is playing as the free peoples. So she's playing a mix of elves, dwarves, and men. Okay, they're all the blue, uh, all the blue miniatures. But they have different, uh, different types of miniatures. So this is a veteran dwarf compared against kind of like a regular dwarf or whatever they're called, like a mini dwarf. I don't know. Dwarf what regular. Is. Dwarf regular. Okay, I was right. Yep. So they have different combat values. They're, they're slightly different abilities and stuff. Um, even though they're all blue, there's just different sculpts for each type. So this is the lake men, okay? And then we have, uh, what do we got? We got elf uh, spearmen. Okay, we got elf spearmen on the board here. We also have elf archers. Okay, we got some elf archers out here. And we'll try to talk about which ones are attacking, which ones are playing cards for. I know it's hard to see on camera completely. Um, and like, likewise on my side, uh, you'll see a bunch of red plastic, but <laughs> there are uh, like great orcs that are huge. And then like little orcs, like regular orcs or whatever that are smaller. Okay, and they both have different combat values, different uh, maneuver abilities. And then we have like wargs, okay. We have wargs and some of these miniatures and sculpts you'll recognize from War of the Ring if you guys have ever seen us play that or own that game or played that the more popular game out of the two um and oh i also have goblins and of course goblins are hiding in the mountains okay so goblins are different they they actually muster from up in these two mountain passes basically these goblin mustering points that are kind of closed but basically if you look at it so you see all the red uh i have red diamonds up here in the right so those are my mustering points basically my armies are going to grow and come marching in from the northeast, okay? And Mel is more in the like center and south of the map, and she is trying to hold points. So these uh, settlements are Mel's mustering points for the free peoples, like the Runes of Dale, 
the Eastern Spur, the Camp, um, Fallen Bridge. These are places I want to control, and Mel wants to stop me from controlling. So how the game ends and how we decide which side wins uh, is as the shadow player, you see I have a score up on the top of the screen there. So I'm trying to get to 10 points. If at the end of a round, I have 10 points, I win. Or if I have 10 points, and I'll explain how to get points, if I have, and I can lose points, points are a, you know, a give and take. Uh, if I have 10 control points, uh, and one, one of those control points I have is the front gate, uh, I instantly win as soon as I hit 10. So Mel wants to make sure I don't get the front gate so she still has the rest of a round to try to stop me from having my 10 points by taking back a control point or a settlement. So we have like the Eastern Spur, which has fortifications. So this is kind of like something I have to break through to even do damage to the army there are these little triangles. So there's like six fortification points up here in the front gate. There's three fortification points here. And then down on Raven Hill, there is a uh, three fortification here. So any one of these one, two, three fortification points, those are considered four points if I can capture those, okay? So if I grab this as four points, if I go along here, grab the camp, the camp is only two points, okay? So the camp, Ruins of Dale, uh, Fallen Bridge, and Lower Slopes, uh, where the blue squares are, the ones that don't have fortifications, my understanding is those are two points only. Pretty sure that's correct. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, I need to try to capture a total of 10 points and still have those 10 points by the end of a round when we do the victory check and I win. Or if I grab the front gate as one of those, as soon as I hit 10 points and I have the front gate, whether it's the last one I capture or it's just part of my points, uh, instant win, game stops, I win. Okay, as a shadow player, that's what I'm trying to do. It's just move dudes across the map, fight battles, kill blue stuff, and take over blue squares, okay? That's basically what's, what's going on for me. Mel is a free people's player. She's trying to stop that from happening, trying to slow me down. And like I said before, there is an end to this game no matter what. If Mel can stall me long enough and, and prevent me from having 10 points in the round or grabbing the front gate, uh, she could win by default by this fate track down here uh, moving up. And let me get closer on that one so I can kind of explain that. Uh, let's do this. Just want to, maybe I can. Here, let's just do this. Okay. Uh, so this fate track, there's a little fate token that moves across from one up to 15. And if you'll notice, there's character miniatures on here, like Bjorn, who is the, you know, changeling or whatever, shapeshifter, whatever he's called, skin changer, skin changer, right? Uh, we have Bilbo. Okay, little, little Bilbo. And we have Thorn, Oak, and Shield. Okay, all, all, all known characters you know from The Hobbit. Uh, and then we have uh, Lord of the Eagles, I believe is that guy's what he's called. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all sitting on the track and they all have their specific spots at numbers. So as the turns are going the game, I'm gonna pull tokens from a not included opaque container, stolen right from FFG for sure. Uh, these guys thought that was a cool thing to do. So no, there's no bag included in the game. Uh, we'll talk about the bag in a sec. Super important topic. Um, so uh, the fate track moves along. And as it reaches these points, uh, these characters become ready. And Mel could then deploy them through mustering actions onto the board. But every round, I'm pulling tokens from a bag, which could advance this track different numbers. There's also cards and abilities that might move it back. Uh, or move characters back on the track and, you know, mess with this. But as the game's going, every round I'm pulling at least one token, and this is going up by a certain amount, from one to three usually. Uh, there is a zero token that could be put into the bag. Uh, but as it moves along, eventually we'll hit 15. Once it hits 15, I'm done. I lose. Free People's Player wins. So by default, she could just stall me for a set amount of rounds. It's not set because it's a different tokens are pulled out. That's why the game could go really quick, could go longer based on numbers that are pulled from the bag and what's happening with card effects and stuff. Um, but, but the free people's player automatically wins if she can hold me from getting 10 points before the fate track hits 15. Okay, or, or I have a character. Uh, Mel has all these cool characters we'll talk about in a sec. She's got Gandalf, Thorin, you know, um, Thandril, Bilbo, Bard, the Bowman. You know, Bjorn, all that stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I only have one character who doesn't even start in the, on the board. I have to try to get Bulg, son of Azog, on the board. Um, but if Mel is able to kill this guy, like destroy the army he's with, uh, he will die. And then I lose control of Bulg, 
and I lose. Like, if she destroys the army Bolg's with and can kill him, uh, she automatically wins. So I have to be careful with Bolg. He's kind of like, could be a weak point for me. Um, and I think, is there anything else? I don't uh, think so. Victory condition-wise? I try to explain it in my own words. Um, but there might be something I'm not thinking of. I know here. We talked about the Oh, points. if uh, Bjorn enters play and the... Oh, that's yeah. right. Yes. So this hasn't... I haven't seen this happen yet in our, like, over the years, uh, you know, like our eight playthroughs of this game. Um, but if Bjorn, when it reaches 11, if Mel's able to bring him on the board, and as the Free People's player, I don't currently have six points, I could have six points. I could have eight points. I could have 10 points. And Mel can still take back settlements from me, possibly, and drop my score down. But if Bjorn hits the board when I don't have at least six points, I instant lose also. So that's why the game could end fairly quickly or it could take, you know, fairly long. Uh, so that's why it has kind of such a big time window from 90 to 240 on BG, I think, because, you know, things could happen and the game could really stretch out, especially if you're battling from points back and forth, um, which is kind of neat. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, so Dan says, kill red stuff, got it. Uh, feeling mm -hmm. Achilles will take out Bolg? Uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no. I don't have the Feeling Achilles expansion, Michael, so no. they're, they're not going to show up today. No, they don't um, come out together. So yeah, so the basics of the game, uh, as you'll see as we go play through it, I'm just going to do a quick overview of this kind of mechanics, but it'll make so much sense as most games do by just watching us play a few rounds. It'll click, right? Uh, so basically on our turn, we're drawing cards from specific decks. Uh, I'll talk about these decks in a sec. We roll dice um, based on the symbols on the dice. The game comes with some nice reference sheets. I do love these. Yeah, based on the symbols on the dice. So this is my symbol is the, uh, you know, the shadow armies, the shadow player. And then the equivalent symbol on Mel's dice is this symbol for army, for example. And you can spend a die to do any one of these things. So even though you roll a certain amount of dice, you have lots of choice on how you kind of want to use the dice. So we'll describe that as we're each spending dice. We'll talk about what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. Um, but again, these reference sheets are available online uh, on the Aries Games website in the download section. Uh, so if you want to kind of look at them, if, they, if, you're, if you're curious about the game and just want to know how the flow is or, or, or whatever, I'll try to explain it the best they can. But if you just want to see quick rules covery, uh, it pretty much covers like most things you need to know. Um, like combat, how a game turn works with even descriptions. So if you're pulling this game out and you've played it a bunch, you could just probably read through this quickly before playing and it'll come back to you mm -hmm. uh, what is possible in the game. So then we got combat and target numbers for fighting and stuff. Um, but like I said, the rulebook covers everything, but I will still use the reference sheet to make sure we're doing it right and stuff, uh, following the flow of a turn. Um, but you are spending these dice to do those different actions on your turn. And there are ways to get more dice, but we each, you start with five, I start with yep. six. Yep. Right? Um, and then we have dice that we roll for combat, just boring old dice. I've, I'm using bigger dice uh, that aren't included in the game. In the game, they use like super tiny black and white dice, just like War of the Ring, um, but I quickly I replaced them. Um, and yeah, so uh, for cards, the Free People's Player, again, blue, blue, right? So they get story cards that are kind of like stories that happen during the, the Battle of the Five Armies. So there's a limited number of 20 of these. And when the deck runs out, they're just, they run out. So, and you can only have up to six cards in hand, so you will discard when you get more than six cards in hand, you have to discard down. But every round we're drawing these, there's also a die that lets you draw more cards. And I have my own, um, I have my own deck for the Shadow Player, which is the red one. And it has some crazy effects, these break the rules, they give you more actions for one die and stuff like that. Similar exactly to War of the Ring, kind of like that craziness. And then we share a 30 card event deck, which can cycle if we run through it fast and the game takes long. Um, but these cards, they have uh, an ability that can be used while we're taking actions, but they also have an ability that can be used as a combat card. So they're like dual use cards and it shows you uh, the type of die you need to spend uh, to fire off the event. So if we look, I have to spend this sword as the shadow player if I have this card, but if the free people's player plays it, they have to spend their sword off their die. Uh, and then in combat, you just play it, but it looks like, uh, I guess it's just telling you you get leadership is mm -hmm. what those leadership icons are for. Um, but also we have this symbol 
Uh, this symbol for me is an event symbol, so I can use this to draw event cards, or I can use this to, to like as a wild to play any event card. So you have dual use, so you can choose to use those cards at different times, um, but they work for both players. So they're usually related to like military stuff. Um, and again, the story cards I can show you. So for example, a story card from the shadow player shows the type of die I need to spend for it. And then just lets you know, like, oh, look, move the track. Oh, just like I was talking about. Oh, I'm glad that you get to shuffle this back in and hopefully it ends on the oh, bottom. Oh, I was just going to put this right on the top. No, no, no. Oh, hopefully no? this goes to the bottom. Move the fate track counter one space to the left. This may cause a ready character on the fate track to become not ready, which means you can't deploy it yet. Uh, and then you get to draw an event card or place it. Ooh. Ooh, I like it. I know. So I'm glad I wish you I don't never get showed. To, yeah, I, I'm I glad wish I never showed this example. get to draw that right away. <laughs> Um, I just want to say something really, really quickly because uh, Bob has a, I guess it's a challenge for the chat and maybe myself, but says at chat, every time a red guy dies, if someone in the chat can hit the like button, that would be fantastic. What if everyone already hit the like <laughs> button? What do we do? I don't know. <laughs> that would be funny. That would be funny. So that's a challenge for both the chat and myself, I guess, because I need to kill red guys. So then I want... Oh, I see what they're doing. They know I want you guys to click the like button. So then it helps the YouTube algorithm promote this video and live stream. Even <laughs> people on YouTube right now who maybe like Battle of the Five Armies, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, might have this game pop up in their recommended videos or on the sidebar if they're on a browser. Yeah, they don't even know we're live. Yeah, so the more likes you get while you're live actually helps YouTube promote your live stream more even when you're live is what I've been reading. Uh, so I kind of want to then have my guys die. So yeah. I'm gonna want to play sloppy and let Mel Mel kill yeah, me. Yeah, so this and... is a win-win. I'm I'm not seeing any problem with yeah, any of this. I see what they're doing. They're trying <laughs> to tank my play here. But you know me, I'm competitive, so uh, I I probably rather win the board game than win YouTube today. Oh, Dan says everyone unlike to reset the counter. <laughs> <laughs> no, the likes are going up actually. So nobody's listening. Stop hitting the no, like button. No, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just joking. Please hit the like button. Well, just every time a, a red guy dies, we'll yeah, try yeah. to remember that. A red shirt. We got yeah. our, our red shirt miniatures over here. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Sorry. Before this it goes one. off the screen. Okay. Uh, then we also have these fate cards, which as I pull tokens, which will look at the tokens in the bag, not included with the game. Uh, okay. Uh, these, these fate tokens can have a two on them. They could have a three on them. They can have a one on them. Um, but even sometimes they have this little symbol on them, which is like a fate symbol, which means you draw a fate card. And these fate cards are usually abilities, I think they're all abilities, for Mel's different hero characters, like her character miniatures, uh, to give them like improved abilities. So it definitely has very ability to the play, because you'll only draw so many of these, because uh, I feel like there's not... How many even have that symbol on it? One, two, three... And these tokens leave the bag once they're drawn, uh, once they're resolved, I should say. Four, five. Five. So you can only get basically five of these abilities out of nine in a game. Okay. So some games you could have Bjorn jacked up. Some games you could have the Lord of the Eagles have a bunch of abilities. Or you might not. Maybe Thorin has some cool armor or whatever. Um, but yeah, they're just abilities to help beef up Mel's characters and give her special abilities. Um, but again, it's shuffled up and it's random and it's based on when it shows up in the game, when the token's pulled. And or is the character dead already? Are they in play? Are they out of play? They still get the ability unless they're already came and gone, which, uh, spoiler, I'm sure some characters will die. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that will happen. It feels wrong, but uh, when, you kill Ga when you kill Gandalf in this game, it's like, it feels awesome. But then I feel like I've done something wrong because Gandalf, you shouldn't kill Gandalf. Um, yeah, I can't keep them all alive. I'm sorry. I so will try. As you see, there's some threes, uh, there's some ones and twos. And as a shadow player, I'm hoping to pull lower numbers. Uh, and Mel wants me to pull higher numbers. And there's even two special tokens based on card effects that could be added into the game where I add a zero because I want the fate track not to move. And Mel could throw another three in the bag that also, oh, allows you oh, to pull that, another yeah, one. That's good. So yeah, you could see six out of the nine cards if you see that card. Um, but that's hidden in one of her cards, and my one's hidden in one of these, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, funny story, for those that care, I'll try to be quick. Uh, when I opened this board game, I had not opened this game for like seven years or something crazy. Since like 2014, you know, when we were learning it and playing it right after we got it. 
Uh, and I've talked about my experience getting into the hobby in my, I guess, first full year in the hobby. I got super crazy with it and I go nuts with my hobby sometimes. You know, like maybe make YouTube channels around my hobbies <laughs> and stream them and spend thousands of dollars in my hobbies and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm a little nuts like that. Uh, so when I uh, got into the hobby, I fell in love with Lord of the Rings, uh, the board game, which you'll see some similarities here with the whole dudes on a map combat, territory control, the playing cards during combat. This does have dice rolling, so that's why, you know, it's not as good as Lord, uh, Game of Thrones, the board game, second edition, in my mind. Uh, but this bag uh, that I thought I lost, uh, this plain old black bag, you think, right? I'm going to keep it like this, so, you know, I don't want to get in trouble for crossing IPs, because uh, you get super in trouble on the internet doing that. Um, but when I pulled out the box, I found this bag tucked in there and went, oh, where was this, what was this bag was this? Uh, but then I flipped it over, and uh, the funny thing was, I found this this week when I opened the box after like seven years or whatever, uh, or eight years, 2014, 20, 2002, I don't know, whenever. Um, and I found this Days of Ice and Fire 2013 bag from when I drove 16 hours or whatever uh, across part of Canada into the U.S. to drive to Fantasy Flight Games headquarters to play Game of Thrones, a board game in a tournament, new expansion was launching, all that kind of stuff. Uh, a bunch of nerds that love Game of Thrones all went there, and I thought I lost this bag. Crazy thing, I found this this week, and then my Google Photos on my phone started showing me pictures from nine years ago from this convention, uh, and showed me pictures of me playing it, meeting the designers, all this stuff, meeting designers of the LCG and all this stuff. Uh, it, man, this week's been crazy. Like, what are the odds that the week I pull this game out to play it, I find the bag, and I, don't, I didn't re realize it was the same week and weekend that I traveled to cold old Minnesota and uh, yeah, played some some dudes on a map board game. So it was kind of fun to see this again. It brought me right back. So this is the bag I decided to keep it, uh, keep it with the game. And uh, it brings back memories around that time because I obviously got this bag, brought it home. This game came out later that year. This was probably one of the only bags I owned. So I used it for this game and then threw it in the box and thought we would pull it out and play it again on video and then it just never happened. So I thought I lost the bag, but the bag showed up, the picture showed up. Nostalgia washed over me. It was a good times. So just some little nerd cred there. Uh, there's my nerd cred. So I wasn't lying. I was really at Days of Ice and Fire 2013. Okay. And now we have found the bag. And we found the bag. So <laughs> all is well. I can start sleeping again uh, at night. So all. And now well. we can use that bag for all the all the games that don't include bags. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, if this is one of Rob's funny stories. He must be a blast at a dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> this is my suit. No, but it's exciting for me. It was like a big deal. Okay. Yeah. That was, that was a fun weekend. That's like helped me. I just like, just a show. Like, you know, I got into a hobby, but I'm nuts like that. Right. Like I started, I started falling in love with Game of Thrones, a show. And like instantly we we're going to like, uh, we're traveling to cities to see that like traveling museum thing where they oh, were, yes. they were oh, yeah. showing in off. Oh yeah. In Toronto. All, yeah. They're showing props of the show and. Yeah, I was like super obsessed. And then obviously that's what got me in the board game and like, but even video games, I used to be the same way. Collector's editions, buying games by the same publisher, like just going all in, you know, I just get obsessed. Um, I think some of these people can understand. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was me back in 2013, 2014. Okay, anyways, useless information out of the way. Uh, all right, let's go back to playing the game and we'll discuss some of the other components. So off camera, uh, we have little game trays uh, full of more tokens. There's tons of tokens in this game. I have like 20 of these off to the side. These are mustering tokens that have uh, kind of randomly divided out uh, unit types that you'll see as we do mustering. We'll show that. Uh, but I have these little geek box trays uh, full. There's full off screen of minis. So I do this because I don't like setting up all the minis standing up at the side of the board. It's way too many for the shadow player. So I just have them organized by type. So I have my regular orcs. I even have bats that you haven't seen yet. Those will come into play. I have great orcs, goblins, and wargs all set off the side. Your bins are a lot more full than my bins. Just gotta say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, bring all your bins out just to show. Like my bins off. are not as full yeah, as so, yours. So Mel has her like uh, spearmen. <laughs> oh, there's one that... Cross contamination there. Oh, and then here's my eagles. She's got her elf spearmen, elf <laughs> archers, regular dwarfs, 
Uh, oh, your dwarfs are all together though, right? Yeah, my, yeah, because there's only like two Oh or yeah, three. you only have three veteran dwarfs yeah. not on the board and four regulars. Um, but if you look at my kind of equivalent, I have this many regular orcs <laughs> and this many great orcs off to the side. So obviously I have the numbers. Yeah, I feel like there's something happening here that I'm not I'm not a fan of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but from my point of view, I'm looking across the board and how many of these cool, uh, super powered characters you have and I literally have one and then I have a rule sheet for the bats because they work different But I literally have one special character and you have like 70 over there So True. I only start with four. There is a balance to the to the game here. Okay, so <laughs> I don't want to hear it <laughs> So yeah Oh, and here's my bulk guy, which we hopefully we'll see later, and hopefully he doesn't die, so I lose. Uh, but here's my single character bulk, uh, son of Azog. Okay, so he's not in play yet, and he's off to the side. Other than that, I think Mel has some tokens. Here, just show me your tokens. Mm -hmm. um, These are my only tokens. Yeah, Mel just has some like leadership tokens, ring tokens and stuff, Bjorn tokens. Those come into play with certain characters. I guess this is the only other thing that we have. And then there's, there's a range ruler for... Uh, for Gandalf's ability, he has this ability he can, and even shows Gandalf on here, uh, shooting a blast across the map, hitting hitting my armies. Uh, this just tells you if the territory he's in actually has the range to hit. But then Thranduil, or whatever, has the same thing, where he fires arrows. He has his uh, lake men or the elves who, who have archer abilities. There's cards that allow them to use Thranduil's ability, but he's able to fire arrows across the battlefield uh, at his enemies. And I'm pretty sure that's what this little black thing's for, but... Um, I think it's just so you can uh, yeah. set it on the board, yeah, yeah. right? So then you can put it so, in a space and see where you have range. Yeah, so that's neat. Yeah. But uh, that's pretty much all the components for the game. Uh, but there's a ton for a little little game like this. Little game. Okay, uh, so for setup, I think we've done all the setup. So we the setup is specific. Uh, we didn't just randomly put out stuff on the board. Uh, setup does take a little bit of time, especially if you don't have stuff organized in the box very well. Uh, like me, I just literally dump everything all together in the box, not really sorted. Because uh, the insert's not the greatest, but it does store everything. Uh, let me just bring up... But setup is like the steps, it's not a lot. Um... So yeah, the steps uh, right here. Let's see if I can... So you just set up the game board, and then it tells you to follow this little map here. Uh, it tells you where to set up the characters on there. But here is the setup you follow to put like the certain amount of tokens randomly on the board. Uh, all the units, it tells you how many units to put on each space. Uh, so it is uh, like, just like War of the Ring, there's like a specific setup. Yeah, just double check your tokens there. You got one in the Dale. So Mel's just double checking her muster tokens that she just put out before the stream. Yeah, because I forgot uh, Just making sure they're all there. Yeah, I think I'm good now. Okay, so yeah, you just follow that, and then I think um, you don't draw any cards or anything. All right. So then we just head to the start of a new round. So once it's all set up, shuffled your decks, you placed all your units and your mustering tokens on the board. Do you uh, want to go through these, the, the guys that I have in play? Yes, yes, please. Okay. So I'll just do mine first quickly yeah, while yeah. I'm still blabbing on here. Um, if I can get the camera to focus. Okay, uh, so I have great bats that I could put into play. This is just a card. They're not a character, but they don't work like normal army units. They're just kind of put on the board, and I can use them for a couple things. Uh, I can use them with a muster die result to remove one from a territory, and I choose a friendly army in the same territory and move that army. Or during combat, I can use the vampire-like maneuver card to remove a bat and add an extra damage if I deal some damage. Uh, but then there's also story cards. Uh, that I can remove bats to do other crazy things. So they give you this card just to remind you that bats have a special use that is very different. They're treated different than other uh, red army units. Okay, so that's what that's there for. So I just keep this there as a rule reminder, really, but it's kind of confusing that it's like the same as a character card. Like this kind of should be different, but oh well. Okay. So what do you got? So I have Gandalf. So Gandalf is already in play, and he starts in play here at Raven Hill. This is Gandalf here. So before you continue, so these cards on the side that has half art and, and some text here, it shows which point as a reminder uh, when they're available to come out and how you bring them into play and where they go into play. 
Once they're in play, you flip them. So Mel's gonna flip Gandalf here to show when Gandalf's in play, these are the abilities he has. If he dies, she removes that card. It'll be removed from the game. We don't see Gandalf again that I know of. I don't know if you have a card that I brings bring characters that. back. Maybe there is. Maybe. I, don't know. I haven't seen anything, but maybe. But yeah. It's just a sad day when they die. Okay, so he has a general ability. Uh, so some of these guys are generals. I think actually most of them. Um, before choosing your action die, discard the activation token from this card to place concentration token on it or to cast the Blast of Magic. So I can either put a token... So first I have to activate my generals. Um, I can activate up to three is my choice and it's up to. So I would either, I would take this off and then I can either put a concentration token on it or I can trigger this Blast of Magic. So if I trigger the Blast of Magic, target an enemy army within ruler range, roll three dice and score one hit for each five plus. If the concentration token is on this card, you may discard it to roll five dice and score on four hit plus so instead. It basically makes Gandalf's blast. Like if you take a turn to charge around to charge it up, it'll be it'll, way better to fire it off yeah, later. Yeah. But you have the risk. Will Gandalf be there uh, or be in position uh, on the next round? Or will you get the dice to even make Gandalf move into position and fire that ability and stuff like that? It's, it's really neat. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyways, carry That's on. true. That's true. Okay, uh, Thandruel is also on the board. He plays uh, starts in Ravenhill as well. So he starts as well in Ravenhill with Gandalf. So he is here. So both of these two generals are there. And then uh, he has his general ability. So if I chose to activate him before... I might be able to do this, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before choosing your action die, discard the activation token from this card to place the Elves recruitment token on Fallen Bridge or make an archery attack. So I have um, on the board, and I think you can still see, oh, so I have green tokens, which are here, and then I have blue to tokens. So these green tokens are the elf tokens, and these blue tokens are the dwarf tokens. Uh, dwarf and dwarf men. Dwarf and men. Dwarf yeah, and men. because they can bring lake men. Um, so I could, with that card, I could either put another um, green token, did it say where? In Ravenhill, I believe. I can't remember off the top of my head. And Or I can do the archery ability where wherever Thandril is, I can use the ruler. If he has range, we can do, we can do that. It's actually not him. It's other characters, but I'll read it in a second. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, so, Keith, uh, I did want to talk about this. Uh, thank you for reminding me. I mentioned them kind of quickly, um, but these big red squares these are like uh the goblin spawn points basically so goblins muster in these areas and if you'll notice they have the same diamond that is in these areas so these areas i talked about before i can muster units up here that's why there's muster tokens in there not mustard not mustard <laughs> uh but these tokens uh just are these these diamonds remind me that that's where units basically spawn on the board and the cool part for the shadow player uh, that also means I can have unlimited units in those uh, territories. But other territories uh, and territories for Mel, we can only have up to five army units. So five blue or red miniatures in a space. But for me, as the red player, uh, shadow player, I can have unlimited in here because it's a mustering space. And I can have unlimited here because it's a mustering space. These ones are just specifically where goblins come from. And once there's at least five army units in there, and there is a way with cards, I could spawn other units in there. But as soon as five units are in here, uh, this opens up. So there's a little token that kind of breaks adjacency. And this opens up, and then you're able to move the armies with a goblin lidless eye die, or just regular army movement. You could move an army to the mountain pass. And from the mountain pass, we have, we have this little, little veteran dwarf guarding the mountain pass. We also have on this side an elf guarding the mountain pass, trying to say, like, I'm keeping a watch for goblins. But once I have five units, I remove this from here, and I can keep mustering in there, but then I can move the army out and attack out here. Uh, we can't go backwards in, but you can move one way out, and that's how goblins can kind of come through the mountains or out of the mountains. Similar to how in the book, in the story, in the movies, you know, the goblins are all living in the mountain, and they're all come rushing out. Um, so they can come out from over here, they can come out from over here, and then also there's a big blue square up there. That's where the eagles, uh, that's the eagles eerie, which could come into play later if Mel gets some eagles in play. If we see the Lord of the Eagles uh, come off the fate track, she could have some eagles flying from the eerie coming in and causing destruction and damage uh, to the shadow player on the board, which is, I, I love that. That's super cool. Uh, will it happen today? We'll find out. Who knows? Every time you play, it's like 
different things happen, which is neat, uh, which kind of makes the game fun to play over and over again. Uh, but that's what those are. So Mel, carry on. Just the rest of this. Um, so if I chose to do the archery is choose one region on the board containing an enemy army. Roll one die for each wood elf archer or lake men up to a maximum of five in hills or mountain regions within ruler range of the target region. Score hit on five plus. Uh, in this game, you'll never have red uh, units and blue un units in the same space. So what I was trying to say was Mel could have up to five blue units in a space of any kind. And that's your stacking limit. I can normally have only five red units in a space, but they never share the same space. They fight from adjacent spaces. And once an army defeats another army or the army retreats, uh, you can then move into that space. But you can't, armies can never share the same space from different sides. Uh, which you'll see as we play. It'll make more mm -hmm. sense as we're like going through turns and moving armies and battling and stuff. Um, I might not be explaining it 100% clear, but uh, I'll be able to show it. So hopefully it'll make sense. Okay, my third character that I have on the board is Bard. Bard is up here in the Eastern Spurs. Okay. And his general ability is, before choosing your action die, discard the activation token from this card to place one Dwarves and Men recruitment token in the camp, or to flip one Dwarves and Men recruitment token anywhere on the board. So I can either place one in the camp, which is kind of um, just behind this card, um, or I can flip one over. I don't know if you talked about this already, but this is their movement point. I did not. If the characters want to move around the board, different characters have different movement values. Uh, it's kind of like their speed when you when you use a character die for movement. All your characters, some or all, your choice, however many you want to move, uh, they all move at different speeds so they can run between armies and stuff. And your characters don't interact with other armies when they're out on their own, so I can't fight Mel's characters unless they're part of an army uh, and try to kill them that way. But if they're just wandering across the board, they can kind of like do it sneakily and not be uh, killed. Uh, and then this is uh, their uh, leadership value. So this is basically saying in a combat, they add one to Mel's ability to reroll that many dice. So the more leaders you have in a space or leadership tokens, which have that same symbol on them, that just allows Mel to roll extra dice or allows her to use different dice to move those armies better or even use some story cards or event cards uh, more impactfully if you have an army with leadership versus an army without. So if you have at least one leadership point in the army, uh, you're going to get a benefit from that usually based on what you're doing. Um, so there you go. Okay. And who's the last one you got? Dane, Dane. Ironfoot. So he gives uh, like plus one attack and plus one willpower when he's ready to all dwarf characters in play. Is that what that he does? Oh no, that's a different game. Oh, I was game. like, wait, what? That's a different game. I Never was mind. so confused for a second. I'm just I'm like, joking. Lord of the Rings Do you ability LTG? that I don't know? No, Lord of the Rings is a card game. I'm just joking. <laughs> I know. Everyone who plays dwarfs use Dane. We talked about that in the last stream. We, didn't, we purposely oh. didn't play with Dane in our dwarf decks, in our, our Lord of the Rings LCG playthrough of The Hobbit. Um, but he's a, a character everyone everyone who plays Lord of the Rings Living Card Game knows Dane Ironfoot, right? Yeah, so for his general ability before choosing your action die, discard the activation token from this card to place one Dwarves and Men recruitment token in the camp or to place one leadership token on an army containing Dwarves. So I do get to place up to three... Um, what are these tokens called, sorry? Uh, those are general tokens. Just, okay, three general tokens. Like general I can, activation tokens. I can act, so I can activate three of, up to three of my generals. Based on that, I get to put that many leadership tokens on the board. So this could give me additional leadership tokens if I need them. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have six leadership tokens, so technically you get like six out. I, I have like 12 or something crazy because I get more oh. leadership on the board. Because I have more armies, like I have just more units. Sense, yeah. You have more characters, I have more units. Uh, it's just the way it's like kind of balanced. Um, but yeah. And uh, Dane is in the camp here. That's where he starts. So the rest of the characters, uh, Bilbo, Thorin, Lord of the Eagles, the Eagles of the Misty Mountain that are tucked underneath here, they kind of come together. And we have Bjorn. Again, these are all on the fate track, and they may or may not make it into play. We'll talk about them if they show up. We'll flip over the cards, but we don't have to worry about them right now. We do not have to worry about them right now, which is kind of mm -hmm. cool. All right, so let's get to gameplay. So officially, uh, we are under an hour by a minute. Uh, if we start the game right now. So there you go. So intro, exp explanation, overview. Uh, stories, a little bit of stories. Stories, talking with our awesome chat. An hour. I think it's pretty good for a 3.59 complexity game. So Bob, screw you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I saw your comment earlier. <laughs> Said we'll be here till Monday if I try to explain this game. But again, we'll explain it through play, which yeah. is, I think, the best way to do it with the game instead of just overloading with very specific rules on combat and stuff. 
you'll just see it as it happens. It'll all make sense. Yeah. Um, all right. We're good. And again, uh, if you're watching this on a monitor that is 1440p or 4K monitor uh, that's higher than 1080p, even if you're watching 1080p, you might get a better stream. Uh, if you click the quality settings and put it to 1440p, if your internet connection and monitor support that resolution, uh, it'll be a little sharper. You'll be able to see things better. I just know YouTube doesn't always kick it up to the highest that we're streaming at. So just anyone who's watching, if it looks a little blurry, uh, it shouldn't. Um, so crank it up so it looks better on your screen. It should even make it more um, like a higher bit rate, less pixelization on a 1080p screen if you're watching it at 1440p because uh, it'll be less compressed by YouTube. So I always forget to mention that at the start. But this one we're streaming not in 4K, we're streaming this one in 2K. Um, but yeah, if you're watching on a nice phone that has high resolution or something or a tablet or a laptop or a desktop or a 4K television, hit that, hit that gear and turn it up. All right. I always forget to mention. And then I get comments later where someone's like, oh, it's kind of blurry. I couldn't see stuff. It's like, uh, you didn't, you're, YouTube's screwing you around, basically. <laughs> um, so yeah. All right. So we're good? We are good. So uh, we're going to start with the game turn uh, where we each draw. So I'll just grab you two cards. So you get one story card, one event card. I get a story card and an event card to build your hand. And again, at this point, if we had six or more cards every round, we do this at the beginning, we would right now discard down. You could choose to discard a story card or an event card or whatever you have going on. Um, and we'll keep these secret and we'll just reveal them as we play them. So sorry, you guys can't see at home like what we're holding and why we're what we're doing. Um, we can talk about more things at the end of the game, kind of show what's left in our hand. You'll see as we discard cards, we can show kind of what we discarded and stuff to get an idea. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to keep that secret. And next is uh, we recover our dice. So I have six dice to my name so far. I can go up to seven if I control two settlements in the same region. So for example, if I took Fallen Bridge and Runes of Dale, they're both in the um, valley. I would then have on the next time I gather dice at the start of round, I would have an extra one. And Mel, if she brings Thorin into play, which Thorin which is, is right here at Fate at Track Fate 6, six uh, if he gets into play, and as long as he's in play, he brings Mel an extra die. But if he leaves play, I believe, Equals you lose away. that extra I, die. Yeah. Uh, and I think War of the Ring does that kind of effect too. Uh, so now, uh, Mel will... No, we don't roll yet, right? Oh uh, yeah, not yeah. yet. Sorry. You're doing your general activation first. So we're not rolling dice, we're just gathering them. to Because at this point, it could be a different value of dice based on what's going on in the game. So even if I might gain the extra die later, I don't get it till this point in the round at the start. So the next thing we're doing, so we just did uh, recovery. So we drew our cards, we gathered our dice. Then we go to General's Activation, where the Free People's player as Mel, she's going to now choose from zero to three generals. And generals have these little circle that Mel was talking about. She's going to place tokens on those spaces. For each one she places, if she puts zero or one out, I draw one fate token only from the bag and I have to resolve it. And that will move the fate track up and maybe draw a fate card. If she plays two to three, I will. I have the ability to draw my first fate token. If I don't like it, like it's a three, I can choose to draw an additional one and I have to take that one. If she plays three of them, I can even reveal a third token and, and I'm forced to take that one. The other two I didn't choose go back in the bag. The other one leaves the game for good. So Mel can be risky, she will get more general's abilities to fire off. She gets more leadership tokens in play, which help her out playing story cards and event cards and, and help her do more things in the game. But then it makes me ha be able to manipulate fate a little better. So there's this cool balance at certain points of the game to play more general stuff and play less general stuff. Uh, very cool, very cool. I'm also going to offset them slightly because if I put them on, you can't actually see if a token is yeah, there. That's fine. So I'm just going to offset can, them yeah, so that you can, you can see that. Put them like, like, you know, where they're very obvious. Yeah, just so that you can see that I've, which ones I, I still have tokens on. Cool. All right. So, so I am now you can place three fate on the board yeah. and each fate token has to go, uh, or leadership, let's start, leadership on each different, has to be on a different army each. You can't double up at this point of leadership, but through abilities and things, you could put leadership out later in the round that can be in the same army. <laughs> um, we're going to put one here. <laughs> one there. And... I think of where I want things to be. Sorry. Yeah, take your time. We have all day. 
Okay, so Mel's placed your leadership on the board. Now, I see how much uh, leadership and how many activations done. So I'm allowed to pull up to three tokens, one at a time. And again, I choose. I choose whether I want to keep it and resolve it. And I can keep going till I've drawn three. But again, I have to take the new result if I choose to keep going, right? A little bit of push your luck. But Mel's allowed me to hopefully not bump the fate track up too much. Hopefully I can pull a one on one of these. Here we go, first token of the day. It's a two, and there we go, it's a two. Do I like the two? No, I'm gonna oh, draw another one. Oh, risky, okay. I'm gonna draw another one, okay? I'm gonna draw another one, hopefully I can get a one. I oh, pulled a three. Okay, so, so far it, it's in my favor. It's worse, it's worse. <laughs> I pulled a three. So I am definitely pulling another one, but I could pull another three, which sucks. Or a two, which is still good. Or a two, but yeah. Come on, not a one. And I got a one. So I have to take the new one, newest one I pulled out. It will give you a fate card, which kind of sucks, but I'd rather the fate track go up slower. So you're not getting your, your be more beefy dudes in play. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one I pulled leaves the game completely. It doesn't come back that I know of. Uh, and the, the two and the three that I pulled go back in. So the odds of me pulling a two or a three uh, just got better. Oh, one jumped out. Oh. Oh, it's a one. I need to put that one back in. <laughs> if it was a three, maybe I'll make it disappear. <laughs> and then we get to draw a uh, fate event. Yes. So Mel drew this fate event. It'll just attach to a character. Oh, I didn't notice the art oh, on yeah. the back. It's only one of the three. So it only affects future characters. So there's none that affect like Gandalf and stuff. No. Oh, okay. No. I, I just realized that. So, Fury of the Dwarfs. So, since Thorin is not dead, he's just out of play, this is going to go on Thorin's card, and when this card is in play, add two combat strength to end to the leadership of the Free People's Army containing Thorin. Oh. Two to the combat strength, and two to the leadership. Play on Thorin. So, Thorin will just have this attached to him as long as he's alive. He's going to be beefed up. Nice. So, you just put that with him. I'm gonna just put it, put it face down. So. Just attach it underneath, maybe, oh, yeah, or to the call. side, so it's like sticking out the side or something. Okay. So we know Thorin has an ability. If he shows up later, he's coming into play, more powerful uh, based on that 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 token pull. All right. So next is shadow leadership. So just like Mel was able to put leadership out there, uh, based on the amount of dice I gathered, which is six, I can put up to six total bats and or leadership. Uh, mixed together. So I can put out like one bat and five leadership. I could put out one leadership and five bats or something like that. So I am going to put out some bats. Uh, I think I'll put a bat in the mountain, uh, the eastern bank, right? Mm -hmm. I think I will put one in the valley. Um... And then I'll put four leadership out. And I will put the leadership with this army, this army, this army, and this army. Every time I play, I try a different mix here. I don't know what the correct one is. Because uh, again, I, I guess I could have looked at my card at least. And see, because maybe it's better to give leadership to certain armies based on what cards I'm holding. I should have probably read these. Uh, okay, okay. I'll stick with that, I guess. Uh, but again, we'll deal with the bats. They might not come into play in the round. They're kind of a gamble. I might draw story cards later that might use the bats. I might get in a combat that might need the bats. I might be able to spend a mustard die to use the bats to, to move armies. Um, but I'm just going to put those bats there. And I just put them anywhere because this bat is considered to be in the whole region. Uh, so if a combat happens anywhere in this region, this bat uh, will help me have an extra card in combat and could be used for other shenanigans. And so I have one down here in the valley. It doesn't matter if I put it here, 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 wherever. Um, he's just considered in this area. The eagles kind of work the same way. They just kind of cover a whole territory. They're like, they're like uh, flying in the air above that area, and they kind of can dive down and kind of uh, in in um, impact something happening in that area or that ter that uh, region region I should say region. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, now we go to action round. So we're gonna get the dice tray. Just maybe throw it over here. And we're going to roll our dice, and this will determine what type of actions we even have access to uh, in this round. So, I have event, event, I have a combo, so I have a muster and an army, so I could choose it for one or the other. 
And then I have a couple, I think, what is this one? Uh, muster? No, this is army. And I get so confused with what's a flag and what's a, a, a crown or whatever. So I have two red musters, and then I have a lidless eye, which basically is, uses the goblins that are in the mountains. I can use it to make more, move them, attack with them, and that kind of stuff. Um, so these are my dice. Okay, I have two character. I have an event, and then I have two combo, which is muster slash army. Interesting. Okay. Okay. All so, right. I am first. So, free people's player always goes first and resolves a die, or if a player has uh, less dice than another player, you can choose to pass. Or, you could just burn a die, throw it away, and do nothing with it if you want. Mm -hmm. um, so now Mel has to decide. She's going first. She decides if she wants to pass or if she wants to use one of these dice because she has five, I have six. Um, and she can also choose to use one of these abilities before resolving a die. Um, hmm. <laughs> I'll try, Bob. I'll try. <laughs> I will... Before resolving a die, I will activate Dane Ironfoot's General. So before choosing an action die, I'll discard the activation token from this card to place one Dwarves and Men recruitment token in the camp. So I have like a little pool off to the side here. So I'm just going to pick one random and yep. I can put that in the camp. Cool. Okay, now I will... I'm actually going to use this event die mm -hmm. to play an event... So again, it normally she'd have to use a character die, but the event die can be used to play like a wild for playing any event card. Okay, so she's, what's that, the Palantir, that thing's called, I think. Um, so she's using this kind of like to play any event. So it's a story event. Mm -hmm. We know from the blue, so it's not a one of those event cards. Or not oh, a story event. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Whoa. That's wrong. I didn't read it. Okay, that's wrong. That's not even what I wanted to play. This one is. Oh my. Oh my god, I almost made a huge mistake already. Off to a great start. Luckily you didn't see it. So this really. one, I know I didn't read it yet, but uh, so this... I started looking at it like, that's not right. So this one here, it, uh, you can use the uh, muster from the shadow or muster from the free people. So she's just using an event as a wild to play this. So mustering for battle. Choose up to three different regions and flip one friendly recruitment token in each of them. So if you Thank wanna, you. Sorry. I'll, I'll okay, this. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll just... Thank you for, uh... Okay, so I can flip over three. I'm gonna start by flipping over this one. This one is... a dwarf veteran. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's gonna go here. Uh, I'm gonna flip over one here. Oh, lucky me, it's another dwarf veteran. And I will flip over one here. It is a dwarf regular. Well, Dan in chat says, Mel uses the eagles to drop the couch of eternal solitude upon Rob. <laughs> it's super effective. <laughs> I will try. Hopefully those eagles never come into play because I, I don't need try. that. <laughs> okay, that is me. Go ahead. All right, I will spend... I will spend an event die to just draw one more event card and a story card. And I don't have six cards in the hand, so I don't have to discard. Go ahead. Okay, I will use a character die, and I will do a fast movement, which is move one of your armies with leadership up to two regions. So I am going to actually take this army here with leadership, and I'm going to... Uh, is this the one I want to do? Yep, we're gonna go one, two, they're gonna move to here. Go ahead. Uh, I'll play this combo die as a muster die. And I just pick, what is it, two regions with tokens to flip them? Uh, recruitment? Yeah, two different regions. Uh, I'll pick this region. I'll reveal this token, which is two little orc weenies. Okay, so muster those in this area and then let's do uh, um 
I guess this one, uh, this one here. Oh, surprise, two little orc weenies. <laughs> Not really, I'm looking for something better than that, but I guess it's something. I'll take it. I'm hoping they're wargs or great orcs would be fun, but I have, I have like, like, I don't know, 20 tokens sitting off the side of the board, so all my, my more powerful ones could be there, they could be under other spots. Uh, which is neat. Okay, I'm done that one. Go ahead. I have four left. Okay, I'm going to activate Bard before I do an action die, so I will remove his token, and I will uh, I will place one Dwarves and Men recruitment token in the camp. Let's take this one, and we'll place that in the camp. And then... Hmm. I will use... <sighs> yes. I will use this multi die. I will use it as army, and I will use strategic movement, which lets me move two of your armies each to an adjacent region. So I will move these guys in here, mm -hmm. and I will move hmm, this guy in here. Go ahead. All right. I will. Hmm. I'm going to... I will play an event card, use an event die. This is Call to Arms. I will choose up to two friendly armies with leadership and move them up to two regions. Uh, so I'm going to... I'll choose this army. And I'm going to move them, uh, let's move them, one, two, down to this ford here. So uh, I didn't mention before, but with the map, um, the river uh, blocks adjacency between, like, say, these two spaces. Uh, we can't fight across the river here. But any one of these spots with the double arrows and the kind of, like, mud, uh, the damp lower land there, uh, and it also has swamp there, uh, this is a ford. So you can fight across it. There is effect on combat when you do that for the first round. Um, but you are able to pass across that, which I think Mel just did, right? Moving did, up this yeah. way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just so you guys know, there's a there's like three spots uh, down here, here, here. Oh, actually, there's five. Sorry, five spots to cross the river. Um, but you can't just do it anywhere normally. Um, and then my other army with leadership, I'll move one, two, I'll move this one. Down to here. I'll leave these mustering tokens in these areas. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I am going to, before resolving a die, I am going to trigger Thandril's ability. So we'll remove a token. And I can uh, either uh, place one Elder recruitment token on the Fallen Bridge which is here, or I can make an archery attack, which I will. Choose one region on the board containing an enemy army. Let's say this one. Uh, roll one die for each wood, elf, archer, or lake men unit up to a maximum of five in hills or mountain regions within rural range. So I think the only ones are these guys, and they're yep. clearly within range. Correct. I have three of them in there, so yep. I can roll three die, and I hit on five plus. Do you get to reroll misses or no? No, but that's decent. Oh, you hit two. Okay, nice. that's decent. So uh, normally this game has damage tokens, which I don't even take out of the box because they're horrible looking triangles and they clutter up the board. So for damage, we're just going to use red dice. And for damage on fortifications that show up on video better and we use it even off video, uh, we'll just use like a blue die to show damage on fortifications instead of the crappy triangle tokens that come with the game. Uh, so this is going to do two damage to this army. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can find the two. Is this a good time to kind of explain how damage on armies work, or do we want to wait until... Uh, Not yet. We can do it in combat, okay. I guess. But basically, uh, an army can take damage. I can choose right now if I want to do casualties to like get rid of it, but it's optional. Um, but in combat, once you have more damage on an army than the number of units there, you have to suffer casualties, which is your choice as the army's owner to remove units. And every unit you remove reduces two damage from that army. So we'll just use this die and I'll move it around the army for now. And there is a rally action you can use off of a muster die to heal um, heal up possibly uh, by rolling dice and removing damage and stuff like that. And there's cards that probably let you do it too, but 
All right. Okay, and then the die I will choose. Maybe a bad call. Hmm, this is tough because you have, these are what you have remaining? Correct. Two army mm -hmm. and a lidless eye. Yeah, so we're definitely going to, I think, use the character die. And I will do fast movement, move one of your armies with leadership up to two regions. And we'll take this one and we'll go one, two. And then I think I have one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five there. Mm -hmm. And I have three tokens. Nice. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do... Let's do strategic movement off of a army die, uh, which allows me to move uh, two armies, uh, each one region, right? Is that right? Can I do that? Yep. With the army die, is that what it's called? Yeah, strategic movement, I think that's what I'm doing. Yeah, uh, right here. Move two of your armies each to an adjacent region. So I'll move this army to this adjacent region. Mm. And I'll move this army to this adjacent oh, region. Oh, I see what you're doing. No, wonderful. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, uh, go ahead. Hmm. Mm. I will muster with this die, and I will do recruit, choose up to two different regions on the board, and flip one token in each. Or flip, yeah. Yeah. Let's do one here. Oh, a dwarf veteran. I'm getting them all. Nice. That's bad, probably, because I probably yeah, don't have if any if I don't left. kill any, you'll run out oh, of that's them. That's the last one I have. Excellent. And then... Mm, I see there's a problem happening here, so let's do this one, which is a dwarf archer. 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 Holding the bow, Defense. not the spear. Okay. All right. My Go turn. Ahead. Yeah. That'd be bad. I'm going to spend an army die Whoa! Oh, to no. throw it on the ground. Um, I'll get that in a minute. <laughs> Uh, when we inevitably take a break. Uh, so I will move an army. Uh, so I'm doing what's it called? Uh, just attacking, right? So I am move one of your armies to an adjacent region and attack. So this is perfect. We show combat already. So I'm going to move this army, which you already damaged. Super annoying. I'm going to move them to this adjacent plains region. Uh, and also something I didn't note. Uh, there are in each of these rings different, um, uh, like... What are those terrain types, I guess? Yep. So we have plains, hills, swamp. There's fortification or uh, settlements. I think that's what it's called. I don't know. Uh, mountains, hills. There's a whole bunch of different ones. Um, and each unit, which we'll see in the combat steps, uh, could have like an advantage at the beginning of combat for having terrain superiority, I think is what it's called. Um, so I've moved from this swamp to this plains. So we only kind of care where the fight's happening. Um, I believe that's how it works. We'll just read it just to make sure. Um, but yeah, so I'm moving this army and I'm going to attack the ruins of Dale. Okay. So uh, in combat, first thing we do before combat actually is check terrain superiority. And now that I've mentioned that, I think it matters only this symbol, but I just want to double check. So uh, I think it's only where the combat's happening you check it. Because it's like that's kind of I where think the it battling is. Yeah, that's where the happening. battle's happening. Um, hey, Peter. Greetings from Slovakia. Hello from Canada. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. So, ter checking terrain superiority at the beginning of combat, players must check the terrain type of the region where the combat is taking place. That is the region where the defender is located. Perfect. Okay. You count the number of units in each army that has a terrain type as one of their favored terrains as indicated by their unit card. The army with the higher number of units on a favored terrain is considered to have terrain superiority. Basically, all it lets you do is draw an extra event card, which if you have six or more cards at that time, uh, you will then discard down, and then we'll show you the rest here. So do you have, uh, so we each have, these are like combat cards that are set off to the side. They have the same backs as event cards. 
and you kind of gather these to hand uh, in the next step, which we'll talk about. But based on the unit types in combat, you'll see they have specific train uh, per preference here, like a train superiority thing. And they also have their attack value in there and then a maneuverability based on combat when you're playing it. We'll describe that after. Um, but you can kind of reference these quickly to see uh, what that what their superiority is. So what do you got? I do have two. So these lake men and the dwarves love being in that spot. So yeah. I have zero, I think, because if I check, I have wargs and orcs. Uh, and my orcs, they like fighting in swamps. And then my wargs, they like fighting on plains. But again, even though the wargs are on planes, they don't get an advantage. So Mal gets to draw an extra event card. Thank so you. So again, uh, valuing her uh, units that are there. Um, and, and then, 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 we then we're going to build, our, build hands. our hands. So how that works, uh, quickly, you'll see I have two story cards. Those get set aside. They are not used in combat. They're yep. only used during the action rounds. So set aside. I'll set them aside. Then I take the events I still have in hand which should be six or less if you've discarded down. Yep, I have one. You have one. And then you take cards that are from units. So I obviously am not going to take the great orcs. I don't have a great orc unit in there, so I don't take that. But uh, I have a vampire bat, uh, so I get vampire-like card in my hand for my combat cards. I have wargs in there, so I get wargs in there. And we'll talk more about this stuff on the card when we get there. And I have little orcs in there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's my hand. And then everybody adds the regroup card every time you're in combat. This allows you to get cards back that you've played. Also allows you to retreat a little safer. Um, and we'll show that hopefully at some point. We'll so see. I have my two characters that are in battle, plus my regroup, plus the one event I had. Yeah, so it's kind of one of those games. This reminds me of like Fury of Dracula, kind of, or Game of Thrones, the board game second edition, where you kind of know what's in the opponent's hand, except for a few cards in this game are event cards you've drawn, mm -hmm. uh, which who knows what they are, right? And uh, so there is some surprise, but you can kind of, see as somebody plays certain cards uh like once i play my word card in play you know i'm not playing a word card in the next round because i would have to play my regroup which would get me the card back for the round after right. so it's one of those games where like you kind of have some knowledge and you can play around a little bit um but it's neat i like the card playing it uh all right so we then first step of combat we are gonna pick uh which is called uh, Maneuver? maneuvering so we're gonna pick one of the event cards from our hand and play it and it hopefully will affect that combat round each player's hoping. Uh, okay. Good. Yep. Okay, I'm playing my dwarf veteran card. So, so I'm playing orcs, for example. Uh, so it basically has a maneuverability. And this maneuverability will only fire off if I get lucky on my dice rolls, basically. So let me show you how this works. And Mel played the, the Dwarf Veterans, and they will uh, could have this ability happen. Add one damage to the enemy army and remove one leadership token from that army, but only if she hits on her specific dice. So how this works for gathering dice, which I believe is what the next one is. Um, so what we do, we look at all our units. So I have orcs that, that get one combat die. I have wargs that also get one combat die. So I get five combat die. We'll just do mine first. Even though it's simultaneous, the game only gives you enough dice for one player to attack at a time. Then you just add damage, but it's, it's technically happening at the same time. And then we resolve casualties like after. Uh, so I get five dice, but I play this orcs card. So for me to fire off the orcs ability, I need some black dice and I will replace. I have two orcs in the, in the army. I have two orcs right here. So that gives me two black dice that I can then swap out two white dice for. So if I roll hits on these black dice, I will get to fire off my maneuverability at the end of combat. So it doesn't always hit. Even though you play the card, it's a little annoying in my, in my opinion. Um, even though you pick this card, you play this card, this card's locked in, you may not have it for the rest of combat, you might still miss on hitting the ability, which is annoying. But uh, it's kind of cool how it's like, you're never sure how combat's gonna go. Um, some people find that annoying. Some people like the dice mechanic in the game. Um, so I'll roll first. And I'm hoping to hit on my at least one black die. So at the end of the round, I can add a leadership token to my army, I hope. Mm -hmm. uh, and hits okay. are fives or sixes. So I got one hit. Uh, 
And I have one leadership in this combat, so I can reroll one die. So this is a really crappy roll for me. I will reroll this one black die. And I get a hit. So that means this ability is going to fire off when we get to that step. So Mel's going to roll her dice first. But right now we apply damage so we don't forget what my roll was. Uh, is kind of how they do it. So I will apply two hits to Mel's army. She doesn't need to resolve her stuff yet. She's going to roll her dice and attack. Um, so yeah, you do whatever. So I have two units. My uh, lake men give me one die, mm -hmm. and then my dwarf veteran give me two die. So you'll have three white, but you play but I... this maneuver card, so you're going to try to get that ability. You're going to replace uh, only one because you have one veteran uh, in play. So you have two white, one black. Okay. Okay, so I did hit on this one, which is great, kind of, but I don't have any leadership, so I can't re-roll these die that miss. Ah, yes! So, and why I was kind of shaking my head is yeah, because this, say? this says, add one damage to the enemy army, so this will hit for two. Yeah, so I go to four damage on my army. And remove one leadership token, but it sucked because you were able to then add another one. You're going to add one back. And I was hoping to get rid of the only leadership yes. you had. So that's why I was kind of like, no. So but. we'll do these abilities kind of after we've dealt the damage. Yeah. So we add an extra here. You remove a leadership, but I also add a leadership. Yep. So, um, but you did get extra damage. So I don't have to, now we go to resolving uh, damage, but she only has two damage and two units. She doesn't have to resolve casualties yet. It's once that exceeds. Same with me. I have four damage on a five unit army. So I don't have to deal with it yet until it gets up to six. Um, and you don't deal with this, you get up to three. Yeah. So now this card stays in play, your card stays in play. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. No, just, just leave it where, where oh, okay, played sure, it, just sure. so we can follow along. Yep. Uh, so now we go back to choosing our next card for the next round of combat. I'll play the wards. Okay, and I'm playing an event, commanding Ooh, voice. What's this do? So add two to your leadership for the current round. So Mel is able to reroll up to two dice uh, this round. Mm -hmm. And then I played the wargs. So I'm going to roll, because I have three wargs in the combat, I'm going to roll three black dice. And if one of them hits at the end of the round, your opponent's forced to apply damage to a maximum of one damage token left. I wish I played that last round, because then if I did do <laughs> two damage, Mel would have been forced to start applying it by defeating a character and removing two damage. So I probably should have gambled on that, but I was thinking like maybe I'll miss and, you know, uh, but that's my fault. So I, I'm not the best with the combat and the strategy. We're, we're not pros at this game. I should have said it up front. Uh, we just kind of have fun playing it kind of casually, but you can probably see how like, this is a game that definitely rewards. And I see people talk about this online. There is deep strategic uh, and tactical maneuvers in this game. And once you kind of know all the cards and the units and the possibilities, it's a great game for two players to just keep, just like uh, I feel like Star Wars Rebellion and War of the Ring, it's one of those kind of games where you can just keep playing it over and over again and different things are happening, different cards are showing up, but players can really start to understand like what's possible and really trying to outplay each other. Yeah. That's not the level we're at. No. So uh, just keep that in mind. We're just kind of showing how the game works, but still having fun with it. Yeah. Still love it. All right. Uh, so I'll roll dice first, whatever, sure. um, but they're simultaneous. It doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm still rolling five dice because I have five units in my army, but because I played the wargs card, I have three warg units. I'm going to replace three of those white dice with black, hoping one black at least hits so I can get that extra ability. And two oh. of them hit, but so did, uh, a white and only one, you get only to one to reroll. I'll just, whatever. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, oh, wow. Whoa. Hot rolls. Wow. So Mel's going to apply four damage, but again, our attacks are simultaneous. So I'll just apply the damage, and Mel still gets to roll her dice and everything with the units that are still there. So I have three, because Dwarf gives me two. And you have That's two terrible. leadership, so you get to roll So re -roll lucky for two. me, I need to hopefully get these two hits so I can maybe have one of your guys die. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, good. That's the best I can do, I guess. All right, so you add two damage. Yep. Okay, so now uh, when do we resolve... I, we apply damage. Uh, oh, this end of round is mine. So we apply damage first. So I will do mine first. That happens at the same time. 
Um, but just for video explanation sake. So I'll remove one of these little weenies, uh, which will allow me to remove two damage from the army. Then I check it again. I still have four units to four damage, so I'm not over, so I don't have to keep applying casualties. I could if I want to, because um, there is ways with card effects and mustering and joining armies through movement. Remember, I have a limit while they're out here and not in a mustering space that I can only have five units in an army. So there is strategic depth here for me to keep killing and healing, for example, so that way I can kind of get some damage off the army and then maybe even move this army down and kind of like move a couple units from this army into this army to kind of have like kind of a, a fresh army uh, so I'm not so weak. But I will just leave it where it was at um, and just put it on Mel to try to do more damage. But I could do a rally effect uh, with a mustard die and maybe even heal some of that uh, later through dice rolls. Uh, but that'll be my choice or not. So then I will go to apply my casualties as well and I would remove that. And I'm still above, so I have to remove him as well. So this area is now uh, Mel lost. She could have retreated during the combat or been routed if she chose to retreat while not playing a regroup card. Uh, those two ways are her leaving the area to an open adjacent area or an area with a friendly army. Um, but I get to then after move as much of my army in as I would like. I'm just going to move the whole thing in. And now uh, I control the Ruins of Dale. And I actually place uh, one of these tokens on it to cover it up to show it's under my control, okay? And then, through the magic of live streaming technology, <laughs> I now officially have two points, okay? So two points. I also now have a Dwarf Veteran back in my Oh, pile. I see, it was your plan, I see, to kind of <laughs> fill up your, your ranks. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know, it was a gamble. And then now we're done combat, so we uh, get rid of all of our combat cards uh, from hand that we have. We keep our event cards and we grab our story cards back and kind of assemble our hand back to where it was uh, after the combat's over. So this damage stays with my army and just sits here. And you four, four Whoops. Okay. I have four damage there. And I have three wargs and a little goblin uh, now having a party in the Runes of Dale. Okay. And a bat watching over them from above. Don't even get, don't even think about it. All right. So you, you back to you. You have no dice. I was the one who initiated no that dice. combat. So it'll come back to me. No dice. No dice. Uh, and I'll just spend this uh, lidless eye, which again is basically just all goblin focused for goblin recruitment, goblin attacking, or goblin, more strategic goblin movement. So what I'm going to do is obviously I can't get out of the mountains yet because they're not open. I need at least five units in there. So I'm just gonna spend that die to muster a goblin in this one and a goblin in this one. So they're slowly building up and coming out, uh, we hope. So I have three here and two there. And that's it. Um, that's the end of the round. I think that's the end of the round, right? Yep. Yep. End of turn. So uh, after we're done the action round, we go to end of turn where the players check victory conditions. I don't have 10 points as a shadow player. Uh, and I you have not killed Bog. You haven't killed Bog, uh, and you're not at 15 on the fate track, so nope. it didn't end. Um, so we now remove all leadership tokens, all bats, all eagles, uh, if there were any in play. They all kind of clean up because every round we kind of can choose where they go based on what things are looking like and plans we have and cards in our hand and stuff, um, which is super cool. All right, so uh, at the start of the round, we're gonna go to recovery, which we grab the dice, uh, and I have... One fell on the ground. Dude. Yeah, but I do wanna take oh, a yeah. quick break, just to run to the washroom here, so I'll grab that other die that flew across the room there. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so we'll gather our dice, and then we draw cards. So one event, one story. Thank uh, you. One event, one story for me. And again, at this point, if you have more than six cards, you would discard down to six. How are you doing for cards? You're I have three. Oh, okay, okay. I'm good. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do there, we're going to take a quick break for like two minutes. Uh, grab that die and just take a quick run to the washroom. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
And we're back. Okay, Mike, I will check that recipe out on Discord. Sounds good. All right. I'll just do it later. Because <laughs> you don't make yourself hungry right now? Yes. I yeah. don't need to see awesome food while I'm trying to focus on gameplay, okay? Yeah, very true. Very true. Again, the stream won't be short, and uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm just going to think for two seconds while I figure out what I'm doing with my generals. And while you're doing that, I'm going to read my cards. Okay. Oh, oh, that's the wrong thing, but uh, <laughs> Giovanni, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, I have placed three general tokens. I will then put my leadership out. Yeah, okay. Perfect. All right. How many did you do? Three? I did three, and I put three leadership tokens. One, two, three. Ooh. Okay, so here we go to fate, fate token pulling. First one I pulled is a three. Okay. Yep, not keeping that. <laughs> Come on, three again. The next one I pull is a three. Yeah. Not keeping that. Give me another three. I don't know how many there are. And I'll stick with the one. Oh, now, obviously, I, ha now. I have to do it. So, Should have only done uh, two. The one's going to leave, and the two threes that I pulled are going back in. All right, so that does mean Bilbo is now ready. He's ready, but he's you still ready, have to spend a die still... to get him in play, Yeah, right? I need to, when he's ready, I need to spend a character die, so I need to spend a die. Where does he go? What does he do? He can go anywhere. Uh, oh, uh, anywhere, play, well, another character Place is, in a think, region right? containing another free people character or a leadership, or a leadership token. token. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so now I do my shadow leadership, right? Yes, yes. Jonathan says, hi, Ribbon and Mill. <laughs> Just when come back roll? from the cottage. Oh, I'm we after. Roll? Yeah, that's what I thought, right? Yeah, yeah. Do all this. And, yeah. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful time, Jonathan, at the cottage. That awesome. sounds fun. Hey, welcome. <laughs> hey, Ribbon Mill. <laughs> and I know it's not a typo. <laughs> all right. Uh... Okay, uh, so I'm going to choose to place some bats and leadership tokens. I'll throw a bat in this region again. Mm -hmm. I will throw a... Let's put a bat up in the mountains again. And let's put four leadership out. So we'll throw one leadership here, one here. One here and one here. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Now, sorry if you throw me that. Your long arms. Okay. We roll our dice. Hey, okay, what I get? Char I got two character dice. I got another event die, and I got one army and two muster. No little size though. Oh yeah, you go ahead. Okay, I got an event. I got three muster. Holy oh, moly. Yeah. And one character. Oh, this is challenging. Excellent. This isn't Can like we're playing off camera and she rolls like four Will of the West die, which are all <laughs> wild. She can use it for whatever she wants. Uh, at least you're kind of stuck. I felt stuck last turn, kind of like forced into a few things. Um, again, early in the game, you have less cards. It's like less, you can get less things done, but uh, sometimes. This reminds me, anyone who's played Memoir 44, this game, or War of the Ring, obviously, uh, this little mechanic of dice rolling reminds me of Memoir 44, like drawing cards and they, only the cards you have let you attack in certain areas of the map and only do certain things. You're kind of restricted by the card play. Um, so even though you have the full board and the full army at your control, you can't always do everything you want. You kind of got to have to make things work with the dice you're given, which is, it's really clever. And I do like, I like the, uh, you know, the kind of, Seeing what happens and figuring it out, you're, even though your long strategic goals might, you might have to shift and change based on how it goes. So it's it's really cool. I like it. All right. Okay. Uh, your first is free people player. You can pass or resolve a die or do one of your character things before the die. 
for your general actions. This is very tough. This one is very, very tough. I am actually going to pass. Okay. I need to see some more information before I make a decision. All right. Um, what am I going to do? Let me just double check my character die, which I didn't have last turn. See. So with a character die, I can do things like fast movement, but it has to be armies with leadership. So again, I don't have characters on the board to give me leadership, so it's only through my tokens right now. Uh, I could attack with an army with leadership, because uh, I'm just looking to have two character dice, or I could play a card from my hand that has a character symbol, or do character movement. I, again, I don't have characters on the board, so that, that's not an option for me. Uh, I have mustering, one, so I could choose to do that rally to try to heal up these guys, but a rally, you get to do two different armies, so like, maybe I wait so I can heal up two different armies and kind of get more value out of the rally. Um... And what else? I don't have Lilith's Eye, so no Goblin stuff right now. Uh, an army die, I do have... Oh, sorry, I have one army and I have two muster. So, uh, oh, recruitment with an army die might be good. Or a muster die, sorry, muster die. Yeah, because you have all these tokens, right? Can I know, flipped? yeah, Holy. yeah. So, like, I, I didn't get much muster in the first round, so it sucked. I can only do it once. Yeah. Um, to kind of build them up. And let's check my cards. Maybe I have ones that help me muster more efficiently or something. Uh, what do you have here for abilities and I'll try to people. keep them like this so that you can see. Uh, so Dane, you're mustering I... a lot, you can do some character thing, and you might be able to draw or play any card from your hand, so it's mm -hmm. kind of open. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so this guy, Dane, is recruitment. Thandril is the whole attacking with a bunch of guys, right? Mm -hmm. Which you do have this little thing going on here. <laughs> Uh, and then you have Gandalf, who is doing kind of a crappy attack, or you could charge him up now and do a better attack later, right? Yep. Hmm. And he can only do his recruitment in the camp. In the camp, or he can place one leadership token on an army containing dwarfs. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Hmm. All right, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use an event die, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to use that event die to play this Trouble Mind card, which I play to the table and just sits on the table till it's expired or leaves play. So I can choose a free people general. The free people general player cannot use the general ability of that character. But then it says on the text here, the free people player may discard this card using a will of the west die result, which conveniently you don't have, or using any die result and moving the fate track marker one space to the left. And this may cause a character on the fate track to become not ready again. So even though we have Bilbo on the track is ready to come out, if this moves to the left and he didn't come out, he's no longer ready so Mel can't deploy him yet. Uh, so it's kind of a neat way to mess with things. Uh, so this just sits on the table, haunting Mel until she wants to deal with it. Which character are you going to choose? That's the tough part. <laughs> uh, general, I guess. Yeah. So we'll put that on the table, and then uh, that die spent. So I'm either thinking this uh, Thandril, because you have like archers here. You have archers here. We've already shown that they can be annoying on my armies moving through. Uh, but you have Gandalf, who hasn't charged up yet, so I can kind of nerf him for a bit. Or Dane, who builds up the camp or throws more leadership on the board. But I think I'm going to stop Thandril from that one. So, yeah, you can just cover it so that I remember. So, Thandril cannot use his ability unless Mel spends a Will of the West Eye or any one of these dice. And what was the other thing? Um, moves the Fate Track one to the, the left. Moves the Fate Track one to the left. So, for now, I've nerfed her archers. I went in and stole all their arrows. Uh, so they can't use them. Or I, I, I snipped all the strings on their bows, I, kind of, what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have cards that can still do that ability, I think. Yep. Um, you just can't use the general ability with of, the, this character. Yeah, of the character. Okay, so that was my turn. Go ahead. Wow. Wow.
Um, I'm going to... I am going to... This is tough. Change my plans. Excellent. You were going to fire on these guys, weren't you? Yeah, you were. 100%. You're like, yeah, I'll fire on this army. Actually, I'll fire on this army. I'll try to kill these guys with these guys. Mm -hmm. I know what you're up to. I don't know what maybe these guys can reach, too. Ask me your ruler. <laughs> Could they? Yep. So yeah, Mel could have had these guys fire and these guys fire, roll like five dice to try to kill these guys in Dale. So I think I might have saved, saved some people's lives or messed with Mel a little bit. Okay, I guess the first thing I'm going to do before resolving a die is charge Gandalf, putting the concentration token on mm -hmm. his card. Then, I need to wait one, one more turn on this. Right, uh, I'm going to mustard. Mm, mustard. <laughs> I'm going to flip one here, which is a dwarf regular. Okay. Which I only now have two remaining in my bin. Yes, you have four un army units in the camp now. I then will muster here. Fallen bridge. Which gives me an archer. Wood elf archer. We choose this one. Okay. Go ahead. I'm going to use a muster die and play if you control the ruins of Dale. I control the ruins of Dale. Place three wogs and one shadow token in Ruins of Dale. Or, since I already have an army of four there, I would have to kill somebody, which I should have probably did anyway to clear for this card. But I think it's kind of funny because you can also, or I put it in one adjacent region without a three people's army. So I kind of can build a second army of three wargs. Um, and then when I move them, I could combo them together, move them together, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I can put them in an adjacent army. So or adjacent region. Uh, so I'll spend that. This card is discarded. And so we need three wargs and a leadership token. Hmm. Hmm. Let's throw these. Throw them here. Okay, go ahead. Hmm. Okay, before selecting a die, I'm going to use Dane's ability uh, to place one Dwarves and Men token in the camp. Let's choose this one. Then, I'm going to use a character die to bring in Bilbo. <laughs> when ready, Use a character die result to place Bilbo in a region containing another free people character or a leadership token. Place five rings on this card. So I guess I'll pass, we can, it over yeah, pass it over. I'll find my five so rings. So this, this is cool. Uh, so Bilbo, when he comes into play, he uh, can move around the board for two spaces, but he brings zero leadership. Uh, actually, you can't go there. There's no other character there, right? There's a leadership there. Oh, or leadership is said? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, when you apply damage to an army containing Bilbo, you can discard one of the five ring tokens he starts with. Yep. Uh, and remove Bilbo from the board, so he like slips on his ring, and he takes two damage away from that army. So it's like he it's like he becomes kind of a casualty. You're moving from the board. He he reduces the army's damage by two. Uh, and then you have out of the way when you use a character die result for any purpose, you may discard another ring token to place Bilbo in any region, even if Bilbo is off the board. So I think on this one, he doesn't have to go where there's leadership or anything. Yeah, Only on wherever. the original enters play. Yeah. Which is cool. So I put, I put leadership here, like kind of in the few places around, because I wasn't sure where I would want, where I would need him. Okay. So he is in play. Go ahead. 
All righty. Uh, let's see what I want to do. <sighs> okay. This is so frustrating. <laughs> they just like pop out of nowhere, come out the ground. Jeez. Hmm. I think Bulg has to make an appearance. But I could attack before you start doing other crazy stuff. Just is it smart to attack yet? Mm, no. no, I will, um, hmm. I'll spin a muster die. Uh, I'm going to bring in my character, Bulg. Okay. Uh, if at least one region in the valley contains a shadow army, which, I mean, I could have done this on the first round even probably if I had a muster die or whatever. Um, but I wanted to wait, and you'll see why. I can use a muster die result to place Bulg in a mustering region. Now, my question is, I assume it's my own mustering region. Yeah. Not in a mustering region I've stolen from you. But again, I'm not sure. I'll still just place one of my mustering regions. Uh, place one great orc in the same region. Flip one recruitment token in each mustering region. And then place one bodyguard token on this card. But if I control the runes of Dale, when I bring this guy into play, so this is why you kind of like push your luck a little bit. I, I went for the runes of Dale fast, so I could get him into play with more bodyguard tokens. And the cool part with the bodyguard tokens, uh, I put three on here, kind of like we just saw Bilbo do with the rings, but I may discard a bodyguard token to prevent all damage inflicted in one round of combat or by another type of attack to an army containing Bulg. Because remember, if an army that Bulg is with is completely defeated, just like one of Mel's characters, if she has like Bilbo in an army or Gandalf in an army, and the army is defeated, that character also dies. If Mel kills Bulg, like I can kill Gandalf, I can kill Bilbo, I can kill whoever, she doesn't lose from that. But if she kills my one single piece of silver plastic on the board, I instant lose. So he's a little fragile. But to balance that, they give me some bodyguard tokens to help keep him alive a little longer. Uh, he adds three leadership with, to an army, which is amazing. And he can move for two when, if he moves. And he also gets this cool ability. If I control at least two settlements, which I only have one right now. But if I ever control another, another settlement on the board... I can spend a mustard die to place one recruitment token in four different regions in broken lands. And broken lands are all these yellow ones over here. And I think that, because it doesn't say in the mustering regions, I think it allows me to put them anywhere in here. So it kind of gets around that, which is neat. Yeah, because yeah. it normally will tell you in a mustering region, yeah. but this one specifically says just regions in broken lands. So I can start, instead of mustering up here, I can start trying to muster closer to the action, uh, which is neat. But again, I still have to get another settlement under my control before we can even talk about that. So, Bulg is going to go into play in... Let's put him in... I guess we'll put him in this army. And he gets a great orc. Or maybe I'll put him with the two great orcs. No, I'll put him in this army. Okay, and then he comes into play with the three bodyguard tokens. And I'll pile those up on his card. Uh, and what else? I flip, flip. I flip some mustard. One in each region, I think. Place one great orc, flip one recruitment token in each mustering region. So the only ones I have tokens in are these four mustering regions. I don't have any in those mustering regions. So I'll just flip this one. Uh, great orc. Boom. Uh, and this one, oh, I it's see. It's unlimited there. It is unlimited, but 
if I'm already flipping, I'm assuming I'm going to get five units in here. Mm. Maybe I just put them here because there's only four. And if I'm flipping, uh, maybe I can get a, I'll, I'm for sure we'll get at least a fifth unit, right? Yep. So that's probably better to keep my armies kind of spread. Uh, I'll just flip this one. A uh, little weenie orc. So that's not the greatest, but maybe I'd like to have been there, but whatever. I made my choice. And then, oh, two little orcs. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, see, it was just an overkill, like a waste, uh, you know, I'd leave him behind. But at least this is now like a, a full army, actually more than full. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. Okay, oh, come on. Stand up, little guys. So those are out of the game. All right. Let's put these in there with those. Okay. Um, okay, so that was my mustard die. We're bringing Bulg into play. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this card. A free people player may discard this card using a Will of the West die result. I don't have. Or using a die result, any die result. Let's use this one. And moving this one more back on the track to yes. the left. But Bilbo's now in play, so I don't have to worry about I know, that. I know. But it does make it now take longer before Thorin or the Eagles or Bjorn show up. Yeah. Which is annoying. great. Mm -hmm. And but if you got a Will of West die, then that wouldn't happen. So then, it was like yeah. kind of worked out in my favor. I like held out a bit on that, and then I saw what you did, and I was like, yes, like your dice rolls, <laughs> excellent. I should have went first. Doesn't always with work him, that way. But I yeah. Like when we played off camera, uh, I did one time have that card, and I look over and on that turn, I'm like, I'm thinking of playing it. I look over and she rolled like four, or three or four Will of the West die, and I was like, oh my, like come on. I think in our last game, I rolled a Will of the West die every round. Yeah, which is crazy. It's so flexible. But yeah. that's why I love this game. As long as you play them based on dice rolling, card drawing, um, and based on where the other player kind of values positions or puts units or what shows up, uh, the plan changes. Every time it feels kind of different what's, yeah. what's happening. It's neat. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, you have an event die and a mustard die. I sure do. I have two character and an army die. Hmm. Jonathan, thank you. All right, I am going to I'll play a call to arms. Uh, I'll use a character die to do so. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm going to choose up to two friendly armies with leadership and move them up to two regions. Okay, I will choose. Uh, I'm going to choose this army. And I will move them. I'm going to go one, two. And then I'm going to move Bulg's army. Oh no, he's coming. One, two. Oh my god. Bring those leadership down. Let's push these up here. Yeah. Okay, Bulg's coming. He is on his way with his two big orc, great orcs, uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Mm -hmm. And then he's got his little, little orc buddies falling behind. Wait for me, boss. All right. Uh, that's my play. Go ahead. Okay. We're going to use Andriel's ability finally now that it's uncovered. And I'm going to use the archery. Choose one region on the game board containing an enemy army. I feel like I need to... Hmm. <laughs> uh, choices, depending choices. on where I go. So if I go for this one, obviously these guys can reach, and we said these guys can also reach. Yeah. If I go for this one, these guys can reach, and they can reach. Can <laughs> these guys reach? Okay, so I can't go for this one. I could, but... I probably should try to maybe eliminate some of this. Uh, Jonathan, we can't use quotes from Lord of the Rings movies or books. It has to be from the Hobbit movies or books. <laughs> so uh, just make sure that's what you're talking about, because this is like a game based in the Hobbit time, not in the Lord of the Rings time. How dare you? 
Can you just tell um, me? Actually, <laughs> um, actually. Can you just tell me how many dice does this big dude roll? Two dice. He two. is a great orc, not to be confused with a uh, just an orc. He is. Uh, they are. He's a two. Okay. A two, right there. And any terrain type is considered to be uh, favored when great orcs are attacking. Okay. Yum 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 yum. yum. Four five. I'm rolling five die on either of these two spaces. I could potentially at least take out one of these guys. Hopefully, I roll at least one successful hit. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna go here. The runes of Dale. And these guys can both hit one, two, three, and then one, do... two, three. It's a max of five. Oh, okay. okay. So, so I can only do five die. If yeah. So get, grab the ruler, just show, just yeah. You know. So, so as long as the base of the ruler is fully in the area you're firing from, and fully is in the other area, you could hit anything in between. Also, um, but can I just read the ability? Yeah, of course. There's like you have to be in hills or mountains. Hills right? or mountains, and these guys are in hills, and these guys and are in wood mountains. elf archers and lakemen up to maximum of five in hills or mountains region within the ruler's range of the target region. Score one hit on five plus. Yeah. So you're so rolling the five group. max because you have three archers here, three archers here. Yeah, both groups. Oh, that's and, not fully in. Yeah, sorry. but you can totally, yeah, yeah, you can totally fire in there. Okay. So we, we can, can like that lay it just to show to you. It's like fires in there, there. Okay. All ones, all ones, all ones. No, get your jinxing ones, out of here. All ones. A big wind's going to go through and knock your arrows out of the air. Oh, three. Okay, I'll take that. So three hit here. Three hit there. So it goes up to six. Seven. Okay, and now I have to perform casualties because it is higher than the four that it is. So I'll take away this little orc guy, which removes two down to five, and then I'll kill this other orc, which drops it down to three, and then I kill this other one, which drops it down to one. So I have one army there with one damage. So she just cleared out the runes of Dale almost completely. So we just killed three red guys. So we need three more likes in the in the chat from the chat. <laughs> I think we forgot the first one that I did. So if we can get three likes, that would be awesome. Well, that was the chat saying to do that. You that's guys, Bob. You guys do whatever you want, but you that can only Bob. click the like button once per person. So I know. How, how do they know who's doing the three likes? You know what I mean? So this well, is, like, doesn't as, make sense. I don't know. Someone that hasn't done it. Let's see if we can get three. Whatever. Thank uh, you, everyone, for clicking the like button. It's just a challenge that Bob has. Bob's uh, crazy. So Bob, <laughs> Bob's crazy and infected. Victory, so. yes. Yes, victory is mine. Uh, okay, now what dice am I going to use here? Hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, let's just look at my events because I have an event die here. Hmm. <laughs> Dan says I'll use three of my ghost accounts. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what I think you're going to do. Sorry, you have a muster and a character. Mm, no, an army and a character. Army and a character. Army and a character. You can move, you can attack. Oh, you can probably just attack, but where will you attack? Where will you attack? Mm hmm. I think we just do this event die to play this event, which is... If Bjorn's on the fate track, move Bjorn one space to the left on the fate track. If he's now ready, immediately enters play. Otherwise, you may move you may move Bjorn and attack with him if he was already in play, but so he's, he's not. he's just going to shift now down to the 10. Get a little bit closer to oh, activation. Geez. Okay. We did get the three legs. Thank you. We got five. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Thank you so thank much you, for clicking you. the like button. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think maybe the there's different people winning. here. Yeah, the chat is winning, exactly. Chat's always winning. Um, Velko is here. How, hi, and says, who's winning? Just joined. Um, I don't really know yet. I guess Rob has two points. And, and Mel's at one on the and fake track. And I'm at one here, yeah, because it got pushed back one. But again, you but could again, just kill Balg. But again, it could move Balg. up three in one turn, yeah, right? Yeah, you could and kill then... Balg, or, you know, I, it's hard to tell. Like, yeah, it's still too early to decide. Yeah, there's no clear winner. If Rob has eight on the score, then it's a little bit closer to yeah. his win, but, but too not early if to you're, tell. But not if you were at, like, 13 on the track. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Okay, I'll, back to you. All right. Okay, I feel a little bit better about that one army, kind of. But, I mean...
Whoops. Uh, okay, I am going to... Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to use a army die result to move one friendly army. Then if you have two or more armies adjacent to the same enemy army, you may perform a combined attack with them. So uh, I'm not sure this is smart to do right now, but I want to show off combined combat, combined attacking uh, at least once in the playthrough to kind of see. It's really cool. Um, so I'm going to move this friendly army. I thought about going after that one, but... Maybe I should have. Okay, so now I have two armies adjacent. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I have two armies adjacent to this one, so I'll attack here. Um, and now we check terrain superiority. So it's happening in the hills. I think I only have one. But I think these three guys are all hills, no? Probably? They are, yes. They so are all hills. Three, I have three. But I don't... Uh, I have one great orc. Um, so I'll attack first with this army. I'll say this is an army checking. So they have one, but these guys care about planes. These guys care about swamps. So you get a card. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and then I'm going to put down my story cards and draw my, or pick up my event cards. So in combined attacking, you kind of choose one army to attack at a time, but you can switch between them. And as long as one army is still there at the end of combat, and, and if I win, I can move either army in or whatever. Um, so I have... I definitely have a bat in the... Oh, oh, no, I don't. Not in the lower slopes. Oh. So this bat doesn't count. He's in the valley, right? Yep. So I don't get the vampire-like card. Uh, I do get regroup. I do have a great orc in combat. We're starting with this one. And then I have wargs and orcs. Okay, so... I... For me, I only have one. These are all the same type. So I only have two cards plus my event cards. And I will play this one. Right? Yep. So I'm going to play uh, Great Orcs. So again, I get to roll like one black die. If I do succeed on that, I can add two damage to the enemy army unless your opponent uh, eliminates all leadership tokens or character or one character from that army. Okay. Or one character. Oh, I think I misread this before. Characters are your silver guys. Yeah. Not just oh, we played this wrong. I know before you were just removing like little weenie units oh. at one time. Oh. Um, but yeah. Oh, I don't want to So I could get Bilbo to be removed or this leadership token. Okay. Or you just take the two damage. And I played Fierce Defense. Your opponent's target number is now six instead of five. So for this round, I have to hit on six on the dice. So you've made it even harder. So this card probably won't happen. Fingers crossed. Uh, so I get to roll. <laughs> I have six total dice, but you can only roll a maximum of five because the Great Orc adds two to the other four that are there. So I will roll one black die for the, the or great orc and four white. And I have to get sixes, which I got one. Uh, I have one leadership, so I'll just re-roll the black. And oh. didn't get it. So yeah, you playing this card, like definitely Huge. nerfed it. Huge, okay, good, good, good. Okay, so now I roll three. Okay, I got two successes, and then Bilbo does not give me any leadership, but I do have one leadership token, so I can reroll one. Four, so that's not a success. So, so two, two damage? to you, yes. Now, at this point, I could use Bilbo, because we did take a damage to remove him, but I will wait. The other thing is, uh, in combat, up a mountain, so this is hills, but if you do combat up a mountain, so if it was a mountain space we were fighting in from a non-mountain space, uh, the first round, similar to this target number being six, it would also be six for that. Or if we were fighting across a ford, um, the first round, the defender also has to for six, or a fortification. Um, to get through fortifications, uh, my target number is six I have to hit to break through those, uh, which is neat. So what Mel did there was kind of like put up a temporary fortification for a round. Um, but because we're just fighting from plains into uh, hills, there's no... Um, no advantage uh, for her there. Keith, don't jinx me here. Don't jinx me. Okay. Uh, so next round. I 
played an orcs card. You played. I played commanding voice. So my um, add two to my leadership this round. So my leadership is now three. Nice. Okay. So I'll go first. I'm gonna roll. Uh, I have three orcs in there, so I roll three black dice, and then I roll two whites. Okay, so this time fives hit also with sixes, and then I have one leadership, so I'll just re-roll whatever. One die. And oh, it's wow. a six, so, so I hit now, you for three. So I'm going to four. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm going to roll three. And again, my leadership is three, so I can re-roll all of these if needed. Okay, we're going to keep the one and re-roll these two. And we got one more. Okay, so, so I, I do two. two. more damage, going to four. Okay, so I'm going to trigger Bilbo. Which is when you apply damage to an army containing Bilbo, discard one ring token and remove Bilbo from the board and remove two damage. Nice. And then at the end of the round now, I will add another leadership token to this army because I hit on a black die, which uh, fires off the maneuverability on the orcs. Okay. Okay. We're uh... getting dicey. Oh, another thing we didn't describe is that in combat... Uh, after doing a round of combat, as the attacker, I can choose to stop the combat right at, at this point. I can say, like, I don't want to fight anymore. Uh, then it goes to the other uh, the other player, uh, the defender, and they can choose to retreat if they played a regroup card, which is just move out of there, go to an adjacent friendly or empty region, uh, and they're fine. Or if they played any other card beside a regroup card, they can route, which means they have to back off and apply casualties, I believe is how that works. Yeah. Um, and this choice happens here, but I forgot to mention that in our first couple combats, rounds and whatever. Um, but, uh, I'm going to continue combat. We just don't say it because, like, we assume the other player will say when they want to stop, uh, or retreat or whatever. Um, but if Mel wanted to, like, retreat these elves out of here, she would have to route them right now because you didn't play a regroup card. Um, but she could escape at the end of the round doing that. So just letting you guys know that's also a possibility. It is. Um, but we're hard-headed, both of us, so we just keep fighting till there's blood and bodies <laughs> everywhere, uh, usually. But there is some strategy like running from battles that you can't win to try to keep characters alive or, you know, keep units alive and come back and fight later. Um, that is part of the game, part of the strategy that we maybe don't show off as well. Okay, so I'm going to choose a card. Mm -hmm. I played a Warks card. Of... Oh, you played a regroup, which that will also. So these events are discarded. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just usually do at the end. But if she had other uh, cards that were blue in play, she would get those back to hand now to play for the future. That's also what the regroup card does, uh, other than just retreating. Uh, you don't have to retreat if you play the regroup. It just gives you the option to do it safely. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Uh, but she can make that choice later. Uh, which but it's says, a highly, highly a possibility. So it does stay on here in the largest font you've ever seen. Special maneuver. <laughs> this maneuver is always successful without regard of the outcome of the combat roll or leader reroll. Add to your hand, again, all the maneuver cards, including special maneuvers used in this combat. At the end of the round, you may retreat without a route. Okay. So I played wargs, so I'll just do my attack first. Mm -hmm. uh, so I still have, uh, I'm still rolling five dice total, five white dice, but... Uh, I do have one warg in there, so I'll place that with a black, and hopefully I hit on that one with a five or six, so I can use their end of round ability, which will force Mel to start applying damage, even if I haven't hit more than needed, to a maximum of one left. So she will have to start killing some people. Okay, I need to give some juju. Bad juju to these Bad things. Bad juju. <laughs> I need a low roll from you. Holy, so I did that I, backwards. I did get three hits, so I really don't care if my black die hits, because she'll be applying damage pretty much no matter what. Uh, but I will, I have two leadership, so I can re-roll two, miss up to two dice. And One, two, boom, two, eight, so yeah, you're applying damage no matter what happens here. Yeah. Um, so go ahead, you roll your dice. Uh, take uh, these if you need. Uh, did you apply your damage? Yeah, Not four yet. damage, so this is up to a six. Okay, and then I'll just take one of these. I would like at least two, so you have to get rid of somebody as well. Uh, I only so got one. hit one. And you, anyway, have I really, I leadership you have one, one. leadership, one leadership. Token, so there is a reroll. Come on, give me one more, please, please, please. Yes, okay, ah. so you have to get rid of at least one as well. So I go to six on my damage die. Now we apply damage if we're over. Uh, so you definitely are over. You go first. And I have to go down to one? Because my even if I... Well, no, we're doing apply damage step. And this is an end of round step. So first oh, you apply I casualties. I think it doesn't matter, though. I don't think it does either, but I do so want to do it in order. four, two... Yeah, this was just like yeah. kind of extra. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like oh, win more, but that's okay. Uh, if I didn't, if I only got the one die to hit, it would have helped. Uh, so then I'll kill a little baby orc uh, to go down to four, uh, removing two damage, which I still have four units there, four damage. So I don't have to keep destroying if I don't want to, but I could to clear damage and clear units out of space to like join up again. Um, 
And then what I'm going to do... We did kill one more red guy, so if somebody in there has in the chat has not liked the video, <laughs> gotta put your like in. Cheesy. Very cheesy marketing tactic. <laughs> no, I don't approve of this marketing tactic. Sounds this is, lame. This is all Bob's idea. I know, but we'll that's why though. it's lame. I'm so. sure. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm just trying to forget about it because it forces me to want you to click the like button and then have aunt units die. But I don't want you to die. I'd rather the YouTube channel burn than me lose. All right? That's the way I play. All right. So uh, I can move one of these two armies or part of one of these armies uh, into this area since I, I captured it. I'm just trying to decide. Uh, now, can I see your ruler? Yeah, of course. I, I oh, know, you need to do some I know nobody can fire from here yet, but I see two elf things, and they could be archers. Mm -hmm. um, and they could fire into here. This place can fire into there. So I got to keep... I can split damage, too, so I probably should do that to keep them less vulnerable. Um, so yeah, I will yeah, just move the whole army in. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah, let's, oh man. Oh, I need to give the dice good juju. Oh, thank you, Logator. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll just move them in here. Oh, we got the one. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Thanks, and Bob. And then <laughs> I will put another marker showing that I've captured my second oh, settlement. No. But unfortunately, this is not a 4.1. This is only a 2. So the Shadow player has officially reached a score of 4. Okay. So now I control these two settlements. So if I had a muster die, I can start using Bulg's ability to place more recruitment tokens in the broken lands. Uh, okay, back to you with your muster back die. Back to me. Well, I'm going to muster with this muster die. I was hoping I retreated. So I should have retreated one turn sooner, so then I could have moved in and then healed them with that, or tried to. But we're going to muster, and we're going to muster here, because I feel like bad things are happening up here. So we are going to get a spearman and a spearman. One, two. All right. Uh, yeah, use all those. Go ahead. Oh, I could do this. Oh, no, I have to use character die. Go ahead. Hmm. Okay. Uh, hmm. All right, I will spend my character die, uh, and I think I'm going to use, I want to do this. Now I could do a move and attack here, which might be fine. I could fast move them, but if I move here, I have to stop, right, when I'm adjacent to an army. Yeah. Or I could fast move them like down into this area somewhere, moving them two spaces. Uh, or what else can I do? Oh, character movement. I can have this guy move and try to get to a different army. Mm. Never really think of that one, but... Uh, uh. I think I will... I think I'll just do the fast movement uh, and bring them one and two into the valley. Oh, no. I don't know if banging his head against the fortification player is smart. It might weaken them down a little bit, but then it's like, uh, it is worth four points though. Uh, it is worth four points. So is this, so is this. Hmm. No, I'm going to try this. I, I haven't done it this way before. I'm going to try to do it this way. I tried to do something different from my recent playthroughs off camera. Just trying different things out, seeing how it works. Uh, okay, that's my die. Back to you. Nobody. I do not have. All right, so end of the round. Nobody's won yet. Nope. Uh, so we gather our dice, draw some cards. Clean up my tokens. Oh, yeah, we get rid of our um, leadership tokens and bats. Thank you. Leadership tokens and the bats. 
And then I draw uh, this one and this one. Okay. And I'm just going to think for a minute about what I'm going to do. I'm definitely going to activate one, two. Oh, do I? You've pulled out two ones, three ones so far? Sorry, uh, from the bag? I pulled out just two ones. Two ones. Okay, so it's likely going to so be more, at least yeah, a two or three. Yeah, likely to be a three. two or three, yeah, yeah. So, but There are still are the ones odds? in there, I think. Yeah, I think we I saw think... like four ones or something. Yeah, but what are the odds? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I would like to do three of my guys here. So, I think we're just going to go for it and hope that... Uh... We're going to do three. One, two, three. Okay, so I get to draw up to three tokens from the Fate bag, but I can stop at any point and resolve whichever one. Uh, so our first one is actually a one, so I'm just going to stop there. Serenity now! Uh, it's a one, but it has a Fate icon on it. All right, so I'll move that up one. So Holy. the next Fate card that's drawn is uh, Redoubled in Wraith, Wrath. Add four Wrath tokens to Bjorn, but we'll do that if and when Born, Bjorn comes in play. Just tuck that card underneath him. Yep. It doesn't really matter right now, um, but we'll just resolve it when he comes into play. At this point, they're never going to come into play because I'm still only at two. Yes. Because it keeps going backwards. Yes. My gosh. <laughs> okay, but I feel like you've pulled three ones, and I feel like there's only one left in there. Yeah. So, All right, sure. It is what it is. You go ahead with all your shadow stuff. Re oh, yeah. So I place um, my bats and leadership. Up to six still. I'll put a bat up in the mountain. I will put a bat, uh, I think in the valley, just, I could, I forgot about this lower spurs not being the same. I should have put my bat there if I was thinking of attacking there. If I put a bat in here, then I kind of threaten that I may be attacking in here. Or I could put it in the valley to help protect me if you decide to attack in. Or this one, if I attack there, that would help. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I will uh, just do two. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll just do the two bats. Uh, then for leadership, I think I'm doing one here. Uh, I'll put one here with Bulg, and maybe I put one up here with this army. Maybe I move them with leadership or something. Uh, and then I have a fourth one, or I put just another bat. No, I think I'll do a bat. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to put a bat in the lower slopes here, haunting your little raven hill here. Mm -hmm. I see. I see what you're doing. Yep. Let's see. It's just like, you know, messing up your hair, fluttering by and like <laughs> messing with Gandalf and Dandrill's hairdos to kind of distract them from. I think they both have hats. I think from they're the fine. Military. Hats no, are I'll steal the hats. <laughs> the hats are knocked off. Now I'm, now I'm all up in your hair, messing with them instead of them ordering their armies to do things. All right, so roll time. There you go. All right, so event. Uh, muster, muster and army. Muster, muster, holy. Holy muster. And okay. a character die. So, wow, that's So a, one character, all roll. Oh, yeah. One character, one army. Yep. Okay. So not a lot of okay. fighting and attacking, I don't think. Well, oh, this is actually not good at all. Great, because mine wasn't At, great either. Oh, I guess I have one Will of the West. So I have three event. Yeah, that's weird. One Will of the West and one Muster. Oh, my God. But it does God. allow you to play and draw event cards and story cards, so you could still do some cool stuff if you draw the right cards. Yeah, I guess. Or just make them work. Okay, well, it is what it is. Okay, so I am going to activate Gandalf. So... Uh, I remove the activation token. I will do the Blast of Magic. Target an enemy army within ruler range. Roll three dice and score on hits of five plus, but I have the concentration token on it. 
So I may discard it, which I will do, to roll five dice and I hit on four plus instead. I feel like we're going either here or we're going either here. Four die, five die, four plus. I feel like I could <laughs> possibly take out this army or weaken this one. Problem is I weaken this one. These one, they just kind of combine. No, I can't take that one out. I would need way too much. I think I need to go here. Okay. I just want to say, need my kebabs is here. Woke up 4.30 in the morning from Australia. I saw your comment earlier oh, before yeah. the stream from the other day saying you're, you're super so excited. excited. Yeah. Uh, good morning and welcome. Uh, you missed a couple rounds, uh, but again, you can always go back and watch, but uh, you know, feel free to hang out live and have a good time in the chat. Good yeah. to see you. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the chat. But you're still in a good, in a, at a good time. Point oh here, yeah, like, we're still, as you see, the still... yeah, the shadow player only has four points. Uh, and Mel's only had two on the threat track, so or fate track, fate track. So still lots of game left. Yeah, lots of game left. I agree. Okay, so we're going here with Gandalf's blast. We hit on four plus. Uh, so Five. I only hit three. Okay. Where is that going? Here. here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this will go up to seven. Okay, so casualties, I'll destroy a little weenie guy, they'll take away two. I'll destroy another weenie guy, that will take away two, down to three. And I'll destroy the warg, and that will take away two, down to one. Okay. So though, your hits on those this game have been great. On those, like, I was hoping attacks. for one more, because that would have wiped him out too, which, yep. okay, I take it. But I it. still would control the region until you move until in. Until I move in, yeah. And remove it. But I just wanted to weaken the front lines here. I know you yeah, can just kind of sense. combine things together, but... Yeah, yeah. No, that ma it makes me use more dice to do that kind of stuff. That's I good. will then. Slow me down. Now, as my die, what will I do? I will actually use this. Uh, this is a question I'm not actually sure if I can do before I do it. This says here uh, when use a character die result. If I change this to a character, is that considered his ability or no? Because it's not specifically character. If it's not, that's fair. I don't know. Because this one says, when use a character die result for any purpose. So I just never had that situation before where I didn't roll any character die. If you want to look up, uh, uh, reading the rules, what it, the Will of the West die is worded, it might say you can spend it as a character die. You know, like it might say the wording kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I know you can do any kind of ability and stuff with it, but. Uh -huh. Action dice pool 12. We can I fight. never had that situation, and now I'm just unsure. Will of the West. Oh, actually, here I think it. I think it does answer my question here. Maybe used as any other type of free people die. Character, oh, army, Perfect. master, Perfect. Okay, so if I change, I'm like changing yeah. so the result. So you're just saying okay. I'm using this. It's a character die. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this die as a character die. Okay, so spend it. Spend that one, and I'm go I can, um, I'm going to do character movement. I'm going to move Gandalf out of this party that's in trouble. And put him, I also want him to have more range. How far can he move? Two. Two spaces? Two okay. spaces. I want to also- But you can move all your other characters around too. You I don't could. have to just move Gandalf. I'm going to just move him here, <laughs> giving him a little more uh, range from his ruler. And I can't attack him there. He's no. like, and now he's not with an army, so I can't kill him that I know of, unless there's a card or something that does it. But, uh, and he could just ignore my armies, but I, he can still use his power though, I think. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I just ignore him. But if this army now dies, he's not part of it, so he wouldn't die. Yeah. One of my problems I had So do you want I to move any done. of these other characters around at all? You don't have to, so. but it's just an option. Because uh, if I move a character, that's just them by themselves, and that is not... Yeah, and then they're not giving their leadership to the army and mm -hmm. stuff. No, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so now do Bilbo's, whatever you're doing, you Oh, said? yeah, sorry. Like, so then you... I can spend... Uh, when you use a character die for any purpose, I may discard one ring token and place Bilbo on any region of the board. And I think we will place him to maybe help protect here a little bit. Okay. Oops, wrong. Wrong. Um, go ahead. Um. Uh. 
I'm going to Hmm. Drop my cards. Oh, okay. Um. Hmm. I got so many choices right now. Like, <laughs> it's okay. Take I time. I got cards in hand. I could use. Like, <laughs> I like what die do I want to save to later? I love it. I love it. I could draw right now to see more, but then like that gives Mel more time to like do things to prepare. Or I could be more aggressive and try to strike before she spends more dice and builds up. Like. Maybe I could have attacked before Gandalf got away, that kind of idea. Obviously, it was her first action, so she could do that, no problem. But yeah. there's these kind of choices where I, like, I always think of doing something. I'm like, no, I'd rather build up and prepare more and maybe do something later. But then then you give the free people's player like more time to like build up. But then I learn more information, so then I might choose to do something different based on you building up. So this game is this fun like idea of, like, I build up an army. Then I force you to get scared in a certain area. But then really in my head, I'm like, I'm actually going to go this way. Or if she doesn't build up in that area, maybe I go a different way. It's so super fun. Like, so you're kind of like, we're bluffing each other. Like, I'm going to build an army here, but then I may never attack with that army. She could be building up a region to scare me away from attacking it. Uh, super neat. Like, I, I love I love that whole, like, uh, the, like, the mind games, I think is cool. I know, right? Uh, but, I think, oh, I don't think mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna play this as an army die and maybe do some strategic movement. Uh, or hmm. I think it'll little his eyes. These goblins are I know. not. I know every time you roll, I'm like, this yes, game is not, not a goblin. I wish I had yes. some goblins happening, but they are not this game. Yes, goblin light. Yeah, it's definitely different. Like some games you see the goblins, they pile up a lot. You get to use them a lot. And then some games you never see them uh, really do anything because you don't get their die result, uh, which is also clever. Um, but I think... I hope to see Bjorn as well. I did. I was able to push him down one to the left, so he now comes in at round ten instead of eleven. But this has also been going backwards. It feels like. Okay, I am going to just strategic. Uh... Mm. I've placed you in a pickle. No, I just have so many options and based on like what I do now changes like what these are all gonna do later and it could go one way or the other and I'm like gambling on like what you could do and it's all like I don't know what events. Yeah, mine happen. is random. <laughs> I know it's like any event could do anything. I don't even know. Uh but then I'm also debating like drawing now, which could give me more options and change what I do, but then I lose the uh, one round uh, one the turn. advantage, right? Yeah, one turn of like striking before something changes. But maybe that's worth the risk because like there's so many places something could happen mm -hmm. and it would just make my plans maybe more educated. Um, I 
But yeah, maybe I'll do... Oh, man. Uh... Yeah, I will just use... Uh... Yeah, I'll just do strategic movement off this army. Uh, I'll move these guys. Does this ruler kind of see? Yeah, of course. I want to see where this ruler can reach because maybe I can get them out of harm's. Yeah, I can get them out of harm's way by moving them here instead of here. So that's probably smart. Get them away from the firing range, right? Or could they? No, they can still get them. Oh yeah. Oh weird. But can you move? Oh yeah, you're doing strategic. Just movement. yeah. So I'm doing two separate armies, I think. I mean, I could spend a character die just to move them twice. Instead. But then you still can reach them unless they go all the way here. Yeah, maybe I'll just do the character die instead. Yeah, yeah. Let's do the character die because I have leadership here for sure. And I'm just going to move them two regions using fast movement. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Well, before I do my next die, I will use his attack, his archery ability, mm -hmm. spend that. Um, I will choose, I feel like I can only choose this space. Sure. Yeah, so let's... Oh no, you can choose other. Oh yeah, they're not in the hills. These no. guys are. You could choose. But these guys are spearmen, they don't count. Oh yeah, Yeah, they're it's all only spearmen. wood elf yep, archers and lakemen. Yeah. Lakemen, yeah. So which... it's this guy, but he's and, not in the right territory. And only these guys up here for yeah. three. Okay. So I'll roll three. Uh, hit on five plus on this space here. On the ruins of Dale. And I just need one. Poor warg. I just need one. Uh, you and got I got it. it. Okay. So this will go to two, and then I'll casualty, so that's gone. And which which die are you resolving? Then I am. It's been event die to play this event. Choose up to two free people's armies and move each of them up to two regions. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna do and they something don't have that here. Leadership. Uh, one. They're going to go here. And you can leave some behind. Yeah, I just don't know who I want to bring and who I don't. I think I want to bring all these guys. This is the question. Do I bring him? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. So I think instantly they move in here. I lose this. I think I, but I will bring the leadership. I will not bring him. You have, yeah, you're just going to attack back, but hopefully I can just weaken your armies a little bit. And my score drops down because I lost control of that, so I only have these two points. Okay. Um, and then I can move another army. Mm-hmm. Hmm. There's two things I'm thinking here. And I don't think it would really give, there's obviously, it's not going to give anything away. I can either move these two guys into here, leaving this open, but again, this is only two points versus this is four points. So they could come into here and kind of help protect this. Let me take that, that's fine. Or these guys that are just all hanging out up there doing nothing. I could get those, if I get... These lake, uh, lake men into another mountain or hills. But that's only that's across closer. here. The, all this is plains oh, and swamp, yeah, that's all true, plains that's here. True. But they could go across the top. But and then they're not then... protected by a fortification. Mm. I know, but I feel like they're just kind of. So I feel like I need to but maybe. They're doing their stop. job and protecting four points that I, I could get. And if you separate them, maybe. I know. It would make it easier for me to grab that point. It would obviously have to work my way through two armies, yeah. two combats, extra dice. So maybe that's a good idea. I don't know, though. But, so, yeah. So my my, de my debate is bring you don't these have guys. To, you don't have to do two armies. I know, you can do up to. You never have to resolve it fully. I know. I could move these guys into here, join, leave this open. Two points is open. But I'm covering my bases on my four points, which I feel like. Yeah, I don't know. No, no. I think they need to stay there. The other thing. 
thing I'm thinking. No, I don't want to actually say that because that's too much information. <laughs> mm. I just keep looking at this big group here. I brought I brought Bolg into play after I captured the runes of Dale. <sighs> so I got do? the three bodyguards. Which I probably should just put them like so. That's not mountain. One, two. And we're getting into like this territory. And that's going to happen. I'm so sorry. One, two, three. It's all good. Hey, Spencer, One, psychological two, torture. <laughs> uh. Yes, it is. I don't know if that's such a bad decision. If I move the lakemen across the top mountain. You can roll a die if you want to help make your decision. <laughs> no, I'm going to stop there. Stop? I'm, okay, yeah, cool. I'm only going to do that. You spent your die for that and it's all I done. I spent an event die. Yeah, sorry. It was one of these. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just... All right. It's my turn. <sighs> I still have another plan. I'm not done. I'm going to use an event die. And I'm going to move one friendly army with leadership up to two regions, and then I may attack with it. Which I'm pretty sure this one with leadership, I can go one and two. And I capture this. I believe this gets discarded. Dang it. I'm I pretty left sure. One guy. So this goes back to your pool of available tokens. Don't flip it. I'm pretty sure. Because I don't think you can muster where I have armies anyway. Um, but this guy just chills. Uh, this is Dane, right? Dane just kind of chills there. Yeah. And, but now I have this point. Oh, that's so bad. And I'm back to four. Okay, go ahead. It's really bad. I uh, should have, because now I cannot. Hmm. Yeah, you Fooled my plans there with that. Uh, Sean, maybe someone in the chat who's been watching since the beginning can fill you in kind of quickly with kind of a funny story of what's been happening uh, from both sides with the eagle eye view. I've been kind of in my own strategic head, not really worrying about what's happening to Mel until I need a turn. Uh, but Sean in the chat's asking, I uh, spent some time with my daughter for a bit, Robin Mel, in a summarized version, if you have time, could you share, hoping some epic stuff is happening. Uh, mm -hmm. So if anyone in the chat just wants to get Phil Sean in, or anyone watching who's joined late, kind of a summary of what's been happening, feel free to get funny with it using Lord of the Rings characters or Hobbit characters. Uh, they probably can say it better than I would, and, uh, and Mel can continue. <laughs> and don't listen to Dan Roberts. Anything Dan Roberts says is a lie. <laughs> It's also an epic game, too. I want to make sure the stream doesn't go till tomorrow. So that's the other reason. But uh, we'll talk at the end of stream, too, about how it kind of went and our, our favorite moments and things we were thinking and stuff. If you stick around till the end, we'll go over, like, kind of what was in our heads at certain points. But That play, though, might have been the TSN turning point. <laughs> oh. Okay. I know. I'm so sorry. Because yep. that just yep. Figure changed, out what you're doing changed and... everything. Yeah, no worries. Because then I was going to muster in there. Two characters. Oh, one turn too short. Okay, I will just draw events, if you will. Uh, so you get an event card and a free people story card. And I will go with my turn. Okay. Uh, 
I will use a muster to play this story card. Uh, place five orcs in one mustering region in the Broken Lands. Then you may move one shadow army in the Broken Lands up to two regions. Is uh, any yellow, right? Uh, broken Lands? Yeah, but only armies in the Broken Lands are up here anyway, but I'll pick one mustering region, drop five little orky, oh. orky guys in, which we'll just do right here. Uh, if I get the right tub. Okay, five little orky guys. And remember, I can have unlimited amount of units here. Uh, I do not hit the stacking limit in those. Um, and then what I'll do is... Um, let me move these guys, uh, leaving one behind. Uh, one and two. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I will spend. What do I do first? Again, this is a problem. I will spend an event die to play this event. Place one leadership token in one free people's army. If you are using a Will of the West die result to play this card, place two leadership tokens instead. Then you may move and attack with that army. Which I did not, so I can only place, place, one, leadership. place one leadership token here. And do you want to attack with them or move them? No, I don't think I can. I think I can only do that if I place the, played the Will of the West die. Uh, I don't know, though. Oh. Uh, let me see. So place one leadership token in one free people's army. Semicolon, if you were using Will of the West Eye, place two leadership tokens instead, period. Oh. Then you may move and attack with that army. I feel like you could still do it, uh, which you can move and attack or just move or just attack. It's your choice. Hmm. Could just attack to maybe break down this group of bandits that are coming my way. Uh, yeah, I'll attack. Okay. Uh, so let's, well, uh, terrain superiority. So this is planes. Who do I have in here? So I just have one with my great orc. These little guys like swamp. Or veteran and I got lakeman. No, I have zero. So then I have one, so I get an event card. I'm going to put my story card down, build my hand of regroup. I do have uh, a bat in the blue area up here. So I get the vampire light card. I have orcs and great orcs in the combat. So, um, and then uh, the slope thing. So uh, where the slope doesn't matter because the, the defense area is not a mountain. It's actually the plains because you're attacking down. It's just fortifications. Um, I don't think they matter because you're not fighting me. Oh. But that's the thing. Like, do you get damage right back then? Like, oh, I know. Yeah, we've never done that. Yeah, this is weird. Sorry. Yeah, usually I'm attacking in on a fortification. We don't normally have you attacking out. You're just usually defending. Yeah, I didn't even realize that one could attack out. So let's find out. Let's see if we can find that in the rules. Find fortifications. Or if anyone in the chat knows. So on the right here in the rules, we have target number. A score is hit for every combat die result that matches or beats a target number. You can keep looking if you want. Uh, the target number is determined before the combat roll. Normally, the target number is equal to five with a few exceptions. The target number for an attacking, an army attacking a defender inside a fortification is equal to six until the fortification is broken. So that does not apply here. Yeah. I'm so not... I think if I hit you back, I'm hitting your units, not think, the fortification. So. Yeah. Because it doesn't say defender or anything. It says if, the, if an army attacking... A defender. I am the defender in this case. You're the attacker, so I don't think that's how it works. Um, the target number for any for an army attacking a defender across a ford that doesn't apply, and the target number for an army attacking a defender in a mountain region across a slope. But again, I'm the defender, and it's happening in the plains. You're attacking down, uh, but it says for the first round only an army attacking from a mountains region across a slope doesn't suffer this penalty. So. Okay. You still hit on fives and sixes. I still hit you on fives or sixes, and it hits your army, not the fortification. So I need to be attacking your castle or whatever to actually do damage uh, to the fortification. Do damage to the fortification. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, so now we pick our cards to play. You have your veterans. Two veterans, three lake veterans, men. lake man. Okay. Lots and lots of dice. Okay, ah, uh, bro, this is rough. Yeah, strong army, strong army. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Play regroup. Okay, this one can add one. Damage. Uh, if you hit. Okay, so I'll roll. Uh, again, I have uh, two, three, four, five, six points, but you can only roll up to five dice. Uh, and I'll just roll five white. And I have no leadership there, so I will just hit you for two. Okay, and then I roll seven, so I can only roll five. Okay. But then Three are switched to black. Yep, because you have three Lakeman okay. units there, so you're gonna try to hit that ability. And I only have two leadership tokens, yes. right? And then and Dane, Dane gives me or Bard, Bard. Bard gives me one, so I can reroll three dice. Nice. Which I will you definitely reroll that one. Three. Okay. So this one is one hit, and then let's reroll. I can only reroll three, so let's. Okay, we did get this. Okay. So two, but then, but then an extra. Yep. Yeah. At the end of round, okay, so I have three. And then, uh, let me read this one. Uh, at the end of round, I may retreat without a route. So I believe I can just retreat this direction. And I don't have to suffer casualties because I played a regroup card. Mm -hmm. And that will just end the combat. Okay. And put these cards back. Yeah, that's not a battle I want to do. With all that leadership in there, I have none. Um, I was just gonna park him there to troll you a bit, but you actually bit and started fighting, so I did not expect that. <laughs> uh, so they're just gonna run. <laughs> they were just there to kind of put some pressure on you a little bit, but okay. yeah, I don't need them being thinned out yet. But I could have another army come down in a bit and try to do the same thing, so. Back to you. Or maybe they could work together. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I think I am going to give a mustard eye, so it shouldn't be any kind of attacking that I know of. Um, but you could build up units somewhere, maybe. I think. Okay, I think I'm going to uh, let's play this uh, with the army result. 
uh, move one friendly army you army and attack with it. I think I could do this actually without doing that. But then oh, but it gives me terrain. Yeah, I should probably do it. Uh, yeah, sure. So I will uh, move one friendly army and attack with it. You automatically gain terrain superiority. Okay. So the army I'm going to move is this one, and I'm going to attack here. Uh, gaining terrain superiority, which means we don't need to worry about that. I'll just draw an extra event card. Okay. So um, I have and this card is spent. Veteran and regular dwarfs. And I have two great orcs. I have, uh, what do I have in there? Three little orcs. I have a bat in the valley, and I can regroup. So and that will go with my event. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> blue versus red. I feel like I've been clickbaited. What and a halo? Is a halo video with the blue ver blue team versus red team? Uh, all right, I played great orcs, you dwarf played veteran. dwarf veterans, so I will roll, uh, so five dice, but then I'll replace two of them with black, because I have two great orcs in there. Okay. And I just got one, but my leadership is one, two, three, four, so I'll reroll four dice here, thanks to Bulg. And I get the ability. All right, so not a great shot, but two damage nonetheless. And it, I'll have ability at the end of you add two damage or you get rid of all leadership or one character from the army. Okay. Uh, I roll five dice, but one of them One's is going black, to be black, yeah. so. And you have one leadership so oh, look oh, at this wow that's a good one that is a very good one damn and then i can reroll damage down i don't have any dice left oh sorry so that is four damage here actually what i'm gonna do uh i may discard a bodyguard token to prevent all damage inflicted in one round of combat um or by any type of attack to a bulk army so i'm gonna spend one of his bodyguards Seems like a good play. Yeah, it would have actually been five because my ability on yeah. here, which triggered, then, yeah. Nope, nope. But it does remove <laughs> one leadership token from that army. So I get nice. to remove that. Okay, great. So this damage does not take effect. Okay. Okay, then you need to add two damage to your enemy army unless your opponent eliminates all leadership tokens or one character from that army. There's no characters, so you can remove the leadership or just remove uh, or add the two damage. The two damage won't kill anyone yet because yeah. it'll just put it up to four, but that's your choice. Leadership tokens. No more rerolls for you. No. Uh, okay. Okay. I will continue to attack. Good. Yeah. I'll play the vampire like. Okay, and I'm playing regular dwarfs. Okay, so I'm doing uh, just five white dice. Vampire ability will happen as long as I do one damage. Uh, but I didn't, but I can reroll three. I'm not getting great luck on this combat. Unfortunately, this happens. Yep, that's crazy luck. Wow, that was good luck. Yeah, wow. Okay. That's the part of a dice rolling game that sucks. Uh, so now I roll five, but three of them are black. One, two, three, four, five. And I cannot reroll anything, so... I did get two. Of course you did. And it's your black, so you get abilities. Damn, damn Smith, damn Sith. I'm sorry for saying that wrong. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome, thank you. This is actually very unfortunate. I wish you for one because my ability that triggers is when you apply damage. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I apply damage. Eliminate one regular uh, dwarf regular to remove three damage tokens. Oh, I didn't apply damage though, right? Well, you, no, no, I read about this online. It's like it, when we're in that step. So yeah. even though damage didn't happen, you can still do it. Yeah, you can still do it for sure. But do I have to uh, do it? No. Oh, okay. I don't think it's your choice. Because yeah, I don't want to do it. It's okay, not going to so, benefit um, me. Um, so sorry, I'm, I'm adding two. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, so this goes back to hand, I think, as long as I still have vampires there. Uh, so in this super large font here, you can see uh, on this super giant card, uh, this maneuver is always successful without regard to your rolls. If you inflicted at least one damage this round, you may remove one great bat from the territory where the defending army is located to inflict one additional damage. Add it to your hand again, this maneuver card at the end of the round. So I get it back to hand so I could do it again. All right. Surprise. Big group. Oh, ho, ho, really? Okay, so I'm just rolling the five dice again. And hopefully it works out a little better. I can re-roll three of them. Uh, I got one more. Okay, so add three more damage to yours. Now you roll yours, and we'll worry about my vampire uh, later. So I just roll all white dice, sorry. Yep, yep. Five. No re-rolls. I one only got hit. one. So apply damage. Uh, so I go to three. You're there. Okay, and now I can, I can retreat. So I think this is, uh, bah, 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 bah. I think I do this if you inflicted at least one damage. So I think it still happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just pull, uh, do we need to? Yeah, I think I should still. Uh, I'll just discard this bat to add another damage. Yeah. Okay, so then I will have to get rid of this guy to bring it down to four. Oh, I thought I had. Oh, no. Oh no, bring it down to two. Okay, then I can retreat, I will retreat. Yep, to an adjacent empty or friendly land. But it can't be, it can't be somewhere adjacent to you, no. right? So it has to be somewhere like So yeah, you here. can't go here because then, you know, trouble. You can't go here, you can't go here. So it's, it's one of these two, I think, is only. Okay. Okay. That's the uh, that's the shadow player yeah. highway. So just be careful. <laughs> uh, you might get you might get <laughs> driven by uh, a big pile of orcs and and uh, wargs coming by. So just be careful out okay. there. Just okay. be careful. There's there's footprints all through there where I was marching. Okay. And then you can go back in and retake it. Oh yeah yeah. Uh, I will. Uh... I want to do this. Yeah, I should just probably keep the army together just in case. I want to leave Bulg 2 unprotected. Uh, and then I put another one of my little tokens in there, so I get the Runes of Dale is back. Uh, there, Yogi, there's nothing that determines who rolls first in combat. It kind of happens simultaneously, simultaneously, but just for Cameron and, and to We're just trying it. to be consistent so nobody messes up that they, did you roll, did you do your ability? Yeah. So Mel and I, ever since we learned this game, like, you know, 12, uh, eight years ago, eight years ago, we always just did it. So like, I would just go first, roll my dice, apply my damage, she would then just go, no matter which side of the board we were playing on. Yeah. I just always just did mine first, and we just kind of keep that flow so we don't forget who did what, and did we apply damage already? Wait, did you go this time? Wait, did you go this time? Like, we just go in order. It doesn't matter, it all happens, happens simultaneously. But we just need some kind of shortcut to remember. Yeah. Um, so now I need to change my score. Zydro, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome, Welcome to the thank channel. You, thank, thank you, thank you. So you're at six now. Six. Ugh. Only little settlements. Just little little settlements. Okay, now it's my turn though, correct? Because that was you that did that? Uh, yes. Okay, so I'm just going to use this last eye to muster. And I'm going to rally. Might as well. <laughs> so you pick two different armies and you roll. Uh, so you pick one, two up to two armies to rally. So I'm assuming you pick the two armies that have damage. So yep. let's say you pick this one. You roll as many dice as there are characters there. So five dice. Okay. And what is it on a five, five or six? Five or six. On a five or six, you get to heal, and you can re-roll all your misses once, but, but I got you already rolled enough here. to heal fully. And now I'll rally here, so I just roll two dice. Mm -hmm. And I heal one, but I can re-roll my miss. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, fully healed. Garbage. I mean, what are those two doing over there? Anyways? Garbage. I don't know, but... You're gonna get eaten. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so... Uh... I will uh, do a similar thing, except I'm going to use a card. Choose up to two 
different friendly armies and make one rally action on each of them. And instead of a five plus, I'm actually going to hit on four pluses um, to do a little bit better of a rally, hopefully. Will you let me rewind something very, very small? Yep. Go just ahead. to go here instead of here? Uh, if no, if, if that's not fair, then that's fine. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say no. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, because I, I moved in there and I have this army here. So, like, I did things based on, like, you moving there. So, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to say no to that because, yeah. Because then I might have to rewind based on where I move. Like, all the things that we saw after, well, I think like, are a little unfair that we saw hidden information on cards. I don't you think anything my, happened since I moved in. Well, from, which that I didn't was from the to. retreat of, oh. I didn't have to move in. Okay. I could have split my army differently. I could have moved in different areas. Mm -hmm. But based on, I evaluated where the board was where you moved. No, nope, that's, that's fair. That helped me decide to move that way. So, like, I just don't want to give away, like, I've already given you a bunch of information hidden on cards and stuff. So, yeah, and just to keep the stream flowing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no on that one. Okay. Um, because so much hidden information has happened since. Uh, but, yeah. All right. You can rally? I will rally, yes. So I'm gonna choose this army up here. I have five, I'm rolling five dice, I hit on four plus. Uh, so I got what I needed, I have enough to heal fully. And then this one here, with my big boss man, I still roll five. And I will reroll these ones, and I got enough, nice. so. Maybe that would have happened without the need for that card, but it's fine. I still would rather it happen kind of for sure. Uh, but it might have been a waste of a card, but it's a gamble. I've seen rallies that have fully missed, even on yeah, rerolls. And it, it hurts. It hurts to spend a die to do that, and you miss. So I was trying to make sure um, it hits. So. And then back to you. Uh, so I will just spend this mustard die, um, and I'm going to flip. Let's flip. Uh, we'll flip a token up in here, which is a warg. And we'll flip a token, I guess, in the same region. Yeah. And another warg. Okay. Uh, and that's me. So end of the round. Yep. Nobody's won. Nope. Back to the top. Uh, oh, sorry. We clean up our leadership and bats and eagles, if there were any. Getting hooked on that board. Uh... Two leadership, is that all? I feel like some bats and leaders left play, but I don't think I missed any leadership on the board. I know I removed some during the round. You, you got rid of some. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we draw. So I'm gonna get these two. You'll get two. There we go. Thank you. One, two, three, four, four, five cards. I have three. Okay, so you go to your general stuff. Yeah, so sorry. Okay. Um, two. You've done two? Yeah. Let's see. You place your leadership tokens out. And I am going to draw. Ooh, the front gates. Ooh. <laughs> and where are they here, Ravenhill? Yeah. Okay, so I get to pull up to two tokens. I'll do the first one. It's a two. Ooh, do I stop my luck there? I think <laughs> I think I stop. Uh because it doesn't give a card to somebody else coming out eventually, so maybe I can maybe Thorn won't show up with so many powers. Or I could continue to draw, but I, I, there, there's a chance I get a one, there's a chance I get a two with an ability, a one with an ability, or a three. Even. I think I'll just stop with the two, and that's out of the bag. So this will go up one, two, to four, and two away from getting this guy, which most likely is going to happen next round. So I would prepare for that, unless some card messes with that. Okay. All of your shadow stuff? Uh, so I will put some bats and some... Oh, you have a bat here, sorry. Oh yeah, I, I don't know if you I want to recall my dice, but I still don't have two settlements in the same region to get a... Seventh die. Uh, I've done good at preventing that, I think. So, what's her? Oh, I have oh, another bat yeah. there? Oh, thank you. No problem. Uh, so let's put a bat in the valley. I think we put a bat... Hmm. We put a bat in the mountain still. 
We put a bat back in the lower slopes. Will any combat happen there? Or will I have some card that allows me to do something funny with the bats? I don't know. I think I'll just do leadership tokens, I think, for the rest. I'll do a leadership here. Let's do a leadership here. Let's do a leadership up here. And we'll do leadership here. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then uh, we roll dice, right? Yep. Oh, oh, we got a cocked one in there. All right. So character, event, muster, muster, event, and uh, muster. Holy. Okay. I don't want a muster anymore. I got three Will of the West die. A character yeah. and a muster army. Yeah, I'm kind of getting screwed on my dice this game. I feel uh, just having so a many musters. musters. Yeah. Yeah. After like I've already like moved armies in, it kind of sucks. And if you don't see cards that kind of help them out, uh, that also sucks. But not seeing army dice for me or character dice, I'll, it means less moving and attacking, which is kind of what I need to do on my side. So, oh, whoops. So yeah, that kind of sucks. But I guess this is kind of wild. These can maybe help uh, using events. Hmm. Oh yeah, no lidless eyes still. <laughs> I know, every time. Goblins, I'm getting screwed on the <laughs> goblins. Yeah, like, this game is so different than the last game we played. I had goblins, like, out of the mountain by now. They were already causing trouble. Uh, but then some games I see, like, none ever. Uh, and sometimes they show up late when it's already, they don't matter. So sometimes you get really screwed on how the dice go in the flow of a game with the shadow player, I find. And I'm kind of getting messed up right now, actually. It's kind of annoying. Okay, I... Hopefully I can make something happen. I'm going to... I'm gonna use... Sandril's ability before resolving a die. These guys up here can either attack here, oops, here. We can't reach that far one. Nope. Yep, so they can only attack here, here. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna roll three die. Let's do this one. Okay, we'll pass the dice tray. Dice tray. So fives or sixes. Uh, I got one. So it does one damage to this army. Okay, then hmm. I need to see what's going to happen here, I think. Oh, this is so tough. This is very, very tough. Um, two. I will... Oh, is a character die? To do a character movement. Gandalf is going to go one, two. He's kind of in range of anyone I need. Um, Bilbo is going to move one, two. He's fine. He's fine. And he will move one, two.
Mm. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I think I will use a character die and I will move, uh, I will use it for, uh, Let's use it for fast movement. Although I just need to look up fast movement because I don't do it that often because I don't usually have a character or <laughs> do it with my leadership. But uh, I might not do it actually. I might just see. Of course, they don't have. Uh, where's fast? I just need to know like what the rules are. Can I pick up and drop off along the way? Um, does that not happen in this game? I can't remember. Um, I, I believe there's a part. But... I think you can leave characters behind. Let's see. There, there might be examples. Armies. Oh, splitting armies is on page 22, if that's helpful. Uh, page 22 is where I'm on. Splitting armies. Before movement, a player may divide an army into two different armies. Mm, That's not what you're talking no, about. No, no, okay, no. Sorry. Oh, no. I think you merge after movement. Yeah, like I think if you moved into a place and you had over five, you'd have to get rid of. I think I'll just still. Yeah, I think what I'm doing, it won't cause any trouble anyway. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is take. These two, uh, this army with leadership. Uh, I guess I can. Yeah, I'll leave the leadership behind here. Uh, I'm going to move this guy. One. Can I go into this? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I ignore you, right? Yep. And then I'm going to go here. So these guys all join up up here. And that's my character die spent. So I just did fast movement, two spaces to join up here. Go ahead. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let's need to do something with that. Okay, let's do an event. I'll use the Will of the West Eye to that. So choose up to two friendly armies with leadership and move them up to two regions. Okay. Army number one. Army number one. Oh, I see. This is probably the same situation you were thinking. Like, if I move these guys, one, two, yep. and then he's in there now with leadership, can I then move two more? No, that's not what I was thinking. Oh, but can I do that? That's two separate armies. Uh, no, I think you have to do the army choice first, and then follow the rest of the card, then do movement. Okay. So, so you can choose, choose up one. to two armies right now. So make your either one or two army choice. And then you can move them up to two regions. One. 
No, I was just thinking on fast movement. It wasn't even oh, related okay. to this event card. Oh, at before all. I do a die, sorry, I want to do Gandalf, I think. Okay. Sorry. Um hmm. I think I'm in trouble though. I think I need to use his ability right now or I might not make it. Yeah, we're gonna just use his ability right now. Uh I think we're just gonna go here, so it doesn't matter. I don't need the roller. Roll three die and hits on five. Plus. Just go here. Oh yeah, sorry. Two. No, that's okay. Two oh. uh, hits go here. From Gandalf's ability. Oh, sorry. I didn't know if you're ta taking them or not. All right. How can I not take them? Oh, with, oh, the, with the yeah. Yeah, no, I think. Okay, fine. so I think only. Oh, it's maybe two. Yeah, I think. I can then just walk in there. I gotta leave one guy behind. <laughs> we'll have a that is issue. worth four points also. I know, I know. Okay. One, two, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I'll spend an event die. Play this event card. Move one friendly army and attack with it. You may you automatically gain terrain superiority. That sucks. So I will move this whole army. Yes, vacating a spot which should have my little token on it. Probably did already, but I moved it. Okay. So these guys are gonna move up to the front gate, which is fortified by six points of fortification. This thing I need to bust through with sixes on dice only will actually hit through this. So this, I like, probably won't even get damage through, but I need to start, I think, um, to kind of put some pressure on. Uh, that's my plan. So that's spent, die spent. So I gain train superiority automatically, so I draw an event card. Okay, and then we build our hands. Uh, so story events are down, uh, and I have, I have great orcs, wargs, and I do have a bat. Uh, up here in the mountain region, so he is could impact combat. So I do get the vampire like regroup and great orcs and wargs. No goblins, no orcs, regular orcs in there. Uh, all right, and I have two damage already on my army. You have none, but your army is literally a dwarf veteran. Yeah, who and, two die and Dane. Dane, who has leadership of two. Okay, so I'll so I can reroll three die, but I only roll two. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gonna be interesting. So fortifications just makes target stuff. Oh. I need to know because like I have the great orcs, right? Who mm -hmm. can deal damage at the end of the round, but like can they deal damage to you through the fortification? I don't think so. Or does it just do it... two damage to the fortification? Like I just don't know how that works. Yeah, because I think the fortification said like it's it this one right here. all damage first oh, okay yeah fine let me you... find yeah, yeah. oh no but look it says add two damage to an enemy army but like again i don't know i mean you could just remove to us not even have to you could remove a, a leadership it's just we have these weird oh if the defending army is attacked while inside for fortification any damage inflicted on that army is added to the fortification instead oh, until the number of damage tokens reach Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So if this does go off and you don't discard or I actually do the hit, uh, it could add damage to the fortification. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No problem. No problem. Oh, I played a card. Then I was like, where's my other card? Surprise. Great works. Okay. Uh, your opponent rolls two less die in combat this round to a minimum of one. So this is the one that we also aren't sure. So I need to read. Because if I have, I literally have. Great orc, great orc. Those add four points. Oh. Three wargs, right? So, so you're does, already rolling. I, I don't know when the math actually oh. hits. Like, do I decide I only roll max of five and then you take away two? Or mm -hmm. because I, I can technically roll a seven, but then you can only roll max of five. That'll suck. Like, when does the math happen there? Uh, so we should probably look at the combat flow. Like, um, maybe it explains it. Yeah, that might have been a bad play for not counting how many dice you have. But you can change it if, if we don't know. That's uh, fine to change because nothing really is. I mean, yeah, you see my card, but whatever. 
If anyone in chat knows or, or has a link or, or can tell us what to search on BGG, if you know. Yeah, like combat roll just says, players roll dice to score hits against their enemy army. But a I player sums that... together the combat strength rating of all units comprising their army yeah. to find their combat strength. Each player rolls a number of combat die equal to the total strength of his army up to a maximum of five. Yeah, so I, n I never can get up to seven, I think. So you don't... Sub you subtract from my dice, not my uh, combat. So I think I only roll three. Okay. I think. I'm not seeing like any Two less dice in his combat roll. I would assume so, but I don't. That's know. all it says under combat roll. So I don't know. It says, using an event card, the combat effects of the event card is applied when this specified by the card text, usually immediately before or after one of the steps of the combat sequence. If two cards take effect at the same time, the card played by the defender is resolved first. Event cards are discarded from play after use. So how is it worded? Like, oh, is you it have a... it there. Sorry. Oh yeah, sorry. No, that's okay. So it's applied. Your opponent rolls two less dice in combat. Oh man. And... Three dice is a fair decision, so nobody in the chat knows for sure. Nobody's ever had this come up in their gameplay at all. Uh, we, I could try to find it, maybe on BGG. This has to be asked before. Um, it's called Great Confusion, if that's helpful. Yeah, so let's try that. Let's see if we can find it. And it's appropriately named Great Confusion. <laughs> Uh, there's a topic about this on BGG called question about limiting dice. The card says to reduce the number of dice rolled, not reduce the combat strength of the army. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking too. Walk, walk, dog, walk, dogger, walk dogger, thank you. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Your opponent rolls two less dice in combat to a minimum. Let's say I have an army of five great orcs. That's ten combat strength, ten dice. Would I roll three dice or still roll five because it's excess? Yeah, like I don't know if it rewards you from having better units in your army mm -hmm. or it still tortures you. doesn't matter what kind of plastic you have. Um, well, uh, let's see. FTFY, ten combat strength is five dice. Minus two is three. Although you're correct, Wolfram, I would like to add, to avoid any confusion um, by possible readers, that 10 combat strength is 5 dice. Because number of dice equals max 5 strength. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. You're right, thanks for explanation. I don't know if any of these are designers on the box, though. <laughs> I don't think so. So we kind of got to take them all with a grain of salt, but we'll just go with that for speed's sake for a stream. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I, I didn't take your um, numbers into account either before playing that, which I should have. Uh, okay, this, sorry. so this is discarded, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Whoops. I keep things. Tokens. <laughs> I'll just shuffle them again if That's I need okay. to. Okay. Uh, so I'll just roll. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to do great orcs. So. Sure. So you have to roll sixes, right, to get rid of. The... But that, but then on top of that, which I'm not going to look up, is like which color dice do I roll less of? Which dice are removed? You know, it could get crazy. But, but I feel like that would be your choice. I right? know. I think so. Makes perfect sense. Three dice. I don't think it does though, because the way it words, you you do combat strength, which equals your amount of dice up to five, and then you remove. But like, when does it take away the two? You know, it could be before, right away, but you never know. Because if it does the math immediately in the events when the event is played, it's different. So I have seven, right? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, I'm Guess looking for sixes, six, yeah. but I do have leadership of, I think, four in there. I should have another yep. leadership token. Yeah, you have a token there. Nothing. Okay. So I roll two dice. I have a leadership of three, so I can reroll both. And I hit for one. This goes to three. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
We'll do vampire like. Yeah, what is uh, okay. so let's just white dice. Looking for sixes. Oh man, this is rough. Uh, but I get to reroll four of them. Yeah, this is not a good fight for me. But yeah, it's just all based on <gasps> dice luck at this point. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. All right, I roll two. Oh, sorry, but one is black because I have a veteran in there. I got one, and I can reroll this one. Nope. I just hit you for one, but this says add one damage to the enemy army and remove one leadership token. So it really does two, and I'll just remove this token. You're still good at five. Hmm. Oh yeah, this comes back to hand because I never used it. Yep, I'll do vampire again. All right. Yeah, this is nuts. Yeah, I just. And now you only have the... three because I removed one of your leadership. Yeah, okay, perfect. Oh, wow, look at me. I got one hit. You want the blue die? Uh, and I'll remove a bat to add a second. Yeah, so we got two damage on the fortification. Okay, and then I roll two. I got one, and then I'll re-roll one. Okay, so the bat doesn't... is not in play anymore because I don't have any more bats in this so region. Two to six, unless you're not taking that damage, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I won't take it. I'll use bodyguard. Okay, then you're at five. Oh, and then regroup. I get my cards back to hand. Uh, that vampire goes back to your hand every time? Uh, I don't have bats there anymore, so oh, okay. only if there is bats. Still. I see, okay. Just so I know what can happen. Thank you. Uh, 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 Regroup. Veteran. Okay. Uh, so still five dice. Okay, oh, finally. Holy. Uh, can I think we roll three. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Finally. Oh, finally. That makes up for the last, like, how many rolls? Uh, I don't know, seven rolls I've done in this game so far. The last seven were probably all craptastic. So that breaks this, and I'm at one. So yeah, I apply five damage. Yep, and you have one damage on your guy. Yeah, you got it for sure. There's nothing I can do here. Uh, one black. No. How are you always hitting on your two dice every time on the first know. roll, not even re rolls? So that's only one hit. Yeah, but it's enough to start damaging, uh, unless I say no. Yeah, I'm gonna say no, bodyguard token. Mm -hmm. This goes down to five. And then I regroup my cards. Great works. So I will... One hit and you got me. Yeah, but... Doesn't mean I'll... Oh yeah, but now I hit on fives or sixes, right? Because yeah. the fortification's busted? Yep. And uh, you just need one. So we should six. have... Oh, sorry, I put... Yeah, the, I took the six. definitely have the six sorry. damage still on the uh, thing. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, that fortification's broken. Uh, there's no attacking up slopes and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, five or six. Yep. And I didn't get but one, so I will reroll three. three. And... Do I even roll? Yeah, whatever. It's simultaneous. I know, I don't but think it's over. Anything. What do you have? Regroup? Yeah, there's nothing I can do. So. Of course you get two, though. Like, what is this, your luck here? So, seven damage uh, I have on my guy. Uh, you apply one. Yeah, I had two hits. I so only had casualties. Hit. I have to remove. This drops down to five. I have to remove another one. This drops down to three. 
Okay, so you did eat through well, only, quite a bit with the lucky. Had you not rolled like five sixes in that one shot, I may have had a shot. But... So you did casualties. Uh, and this adding damage at the end doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And then I will just move these guys on in. Yeah, and good. instantly, because this adds four to my score. And normally, if we look at the... Um, So if we look at the uh, victory conditions here, so again, control of the following locations gives victory points to the shadow player. So the ones with fortifications, which I finally got one, are worth four points each, which is the Raven Hill front gate and Eastern Spur. Uh, so I, I now have uh, this one. I don't have this fortification, don't have this fortification, so that's four points. Other settlements like Runes of Dale, uh, the camp, uh, the camp, which I do have, lower slopes and fallen bridge are with two each. So I have two, four, six. So that plus the four in the in the front gate is ten. Uh, and as you see here at the bottom, it says the shadow player wins if he has ten or more victory points at the end of the round. Oh, end of a turn. End of a turn. Oh, maybe we misread that before. Yeah, I think. Oh, crap. I said end of a round before. But immediately, though, because you control the front gate. Yeah. yeah. End of a turn. But is a turn considered... I feel like that says round, but let me check. Let me check. Oh, yeah. end of a turn. Yeah. Oh, my bad. We've oh, been we playing been, that different. No, we've been playing it right. I think... No, I think usually yeah. you wait till all the dice are done. Yeah, which is end of the turn. Oh, it is end yeah, of turn. That's oh, okay, right. perfect. It's just worded weird. Yeah. It's kind of the end of a full round after we spent all our dice. Yeah. So Mel usually has a chance to, like, steal places back from me. So it's risky if I spread my armies too thin. But... The, the thing that I got the front gate, which is like super rare, like that lined up, and normally that does not. Normally she has uh, Thorin is in there, and we'll read Thorin's ability in a sec. Uh, and normally I just leave the front gate and don't even try. Uh, but I look like I had an opportunity here where the, the fate track was about to bring Thorin in, so I had to strike now yep. or not at all. Yep. And even striking now, if I didn't complete it, I was going to regroup right there and retreat if I didn't get any more hits. Like not enough. Yeah. So getting all those sixes then yeah, was, was like, I'm going to keep pushing. But if I didn't get good on that six, that hot six roll, I was just going to regroup, retreat back to the camp, and just say, I'm never touching the front gate because Thorin's going to show up next, and I can't do anything about it. He comes in, adds more fortification, or heals it. He brings, like, units in there or something. Um, but because I immediately took the front gate, uh, it play just stops. I have my ten points, and I'm the winner. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully we explained it correctly there. All that just happened there at the end. Uh, but I did get lucky on those sixes. But I was that unlucky was on many dice rolls before up until that point. I was getting very frustrated. Like, not just in this combat, but previous combats. I was like, I'm getting way more damage on me than normally gets done. Uh, usually I, I, I'm a little more successful at it. Uh, and I was also going lighter on event cards than I normally do. I only had one event card. And it was... Uh, your army strength is considered to be two uh, for each of my units. So oh, but you're it, already rolling more than, than yeah, that. Yeah, but I was debating on holding that until you whittle down a few. To then bring you back up to five dice? Yeah, but then yeah. it was risky because if combat kept going and you kept hitting me back and I had to start eliminating more units because I was out of bodyguards, uh, Bull could die. Could've. Like This was like, if I push it too far, I could be dead and lose. So it was like, I got to go for it here or I have to back off before it gets too dangerous. Yeah. Um, I but, cannot believe you rolled five sixes on yeah, that. Yeah, that was crazy. So the gates were crazy. stormed. Yes, yeah. I stormed the front gate, which is usually a from my side of view. I mean, I've only played this game like eight or nine times, but even even looking at it, I always ignore the front gate because it has six fortifications. Uh, it take, it's hard to get in there, and even if you break fortifications and you don't do it in that first attack and you lose and you come back with another army later, uh, usually Thorin's in there, and Thorin. Uh, usually comes with ability cards that are beefing him up. <laughs> so this one, when this card's in play, add two combat strength and leadership to the Free People's Army containing Thorin. So when Thorin enters play, uh, you can you can uh, you place him in the front gate if it's controlled by the Free People's. If not, he can't come into play. Then you place one Dwarves and one Men recruitment token in the camp, Eastern Spur, if they're still there, but they weren't. And uh, one Elves recruitment token in Fallen Bridge, which you could have done. I could have done everything except for the camp. Uh... Because I have Eastern Spurs. I oh, have yeah, sorry. Bridge. Eastern Spurs is here. Yeah, I, can, I thought it was the lower slopes. My bad. No, that's okay. And yeah. then add an action die when Thorin's in play. So Mel would have got extra dice to do more things. So once Thorin comes in play, I kind of get worried. Um, 
but uh, if Thorin leaves the front gate or attacks from it, that fortification is considered to be broken. So he goes there and kind of helps out. I thought he brought in healing, but maybe that was on another event card. Uh, another fate card, oh, sorry. So Thorin can get some crazy stuff. Uh, Thorin can get when uh, this card is in play during a combat involving Thorin, add Thorin's Mighty Strokes Maneuver card to your hand. What? So you get this card to hand? So what, you have another card that you can play to like hold off on a card, I guess? Or is Thorin's Mighty Strokes a different card? Oh, that's this one. Oh, I see. I he has his own card, one. I see. I special you, yeah. special maneuver. This special maneuver is always successful, so it doesn't matter what black dice you roll uh, or you get hit on them. Uh, without regard to the outcome of the combat roll or leader roll, Mighty Strokes, add one to your combat roll and leader re-roll. Oh, wow. So see what I'm saying? If Thorin gets in there, and there's another one that's even worse, I think. Shining Armor. So Mel gives this one almost every time we play, yeah. and I just go, I'm not even going to the front gate. Play on Thorin. When this card is in play, you may, you may place here any damage tokens inflicted on the army containing Thorin. Damage on this card cannot be removed with the rally action, and if at the end of a round of combat there are five or more tokens here, discard this card and all tokens on it. So this is like Thorin having his own bodyguard tokens, basically. He's just absorbing damage. So even if I got, if Thorin was there and I got through the six fortification, then I start doing damage, or if I get through the six fortification, Mel fights me and destroys me, and I have to do another combat later. I'm now fighting up the slope, so on the first round I have to hit sixes, but even if I get damage through during a combat, while Thorin's holding down fort, uh, you can absorb damage on here on his armor, and it's like, he can just hold that front gate, and I've had this happen, I remember back in the day when we played, it's just like, I always felt like the front gate was like impossible to take, but it depends if the, the opportunity arises, like Mel doesn't get the cards, or Thorin doesn't get into play quick enough, or I have armies nearby, or if I get goblins marching out of the mountains nearby, I can kind of use the goblins to start hammering on the front gate while I bring other armies uh, in later and kind of make a multiple wave attacks to eventually break the front gate down. Um, but usually I just ignore the front gate because Thorin's coming into play, usually has a couple ability cards, and I'm like, oh man, he's too tough. He's too tough. But, um, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, not seeing Thorin enter play was weird. And the other thing that was weird was my dice rolls, not being able to move more armies. Usually I don't have this much just sitting up here doing nothing. Usually I've mustered down to like one token left. I have all the armies out of here. It's just like maybe one little, one or two little weenie units chilling up here. And all these army units have, have already taken the Eastern Spur. Usually I take that pretty quickly. Yep. So it was interesting the way you built up an army there this time and sort of firing out of there. Well, that's what I wanted to try because they can I, only yeah. fire from the mountains or the hills. So I thought yeah. if I put them there and I can keep them, they can kind of Which fire on anything that, in that. That annoyed me and slowed me down. I wanted to go attack there, but not right away. And even when I brought that army nearby there, it was cool that you just kind of scared them away. Uh, so I, I mm -hmm. couldn't take the Eastern Spur, which I normally do. And then with that army, plus maybe a goblin army, I go and take the camp. So then I get my seventh die. This game, I was trying really hard to get this one. Oh, interesting. Um, and I had card plays where even when uh, Bald was here, I could have fast moved him here. Then I had a move two and attack. Mm -hmm. So in that same, in two action dice, in one round there when Bald was here, I was going to move him in, pick up some guys uh, here and leave some crappy guys, get all the best guys and then come here and take this and get my seventh die. But then when you moved out of here and left this open, and I had that Warg army here, I was like, oh man. I well, I didn't think that you could move them too. I wasn't thinking of the events But that hands. was the two movement and attack I was gonna do to take this. So instantly when you opened up this and I had that Warg army there, my whole plan, the whole time I'm working, I'm trying something different. I was gonna not fight up here and because I was waiting for goblins to show up to help. Uh, but of course the dice screwed me around, so I had to change my plans. But I was debating on coming through here and trying something different because you were building up up here better and defending. And I was and the camp was really built up. So I was debating on coming down here and just working around here and maybe trying to get this as my second settlement in the same region mm -hmm. to get my seventh die in play. Um, and then I can work my way on Raven Hill was my fortification to try to get four points. And maybe with some armies up here, I could maybe work on this if the goblin showed up. We could take that or take the camp and get me some extra points. But... You did amazing things to like troll me here to get damage on here so I couldn't be aggressive because I was healing armies instead and I wasn't able to push. My dice were screwing me around so I couldn't move and attack as much as I wanted to. My card draws were interesting. Uh, I didn't draw as much as I normally do because I didn't see as many event things to like draw and I was always afraid to spend it to draw and allow you more time to build up and plan yeah. um, and prepare. Uh, so then when I saw you open up that location and move your guys, 
uh, originally, like, I was licking my lips. I was, like, going to eat this and eat that and, like, take all this over because it was pretty thin mm -hmm. and just work my way down here and mess with you. Even though these guys are still being trolls, but uh, just kind of make that kind of nerfed. But um, so I would never attack there and never attack here. But when that opened up and Thorn wasn't in play and this was still being pretty slow, as soon as I saw that, I was like, screw this. I'm changing direction. This is super risky. And maybe Bull can join or these guys can join. And then I take what is here and kind of move it up in there. Maybe the goblins can get in play. I did have a card that I was debating bringing the goblins actually into play that I just drew. Uh, this card, where place two goblins and one leadership token uh, in a goblin mustering point or mountain pass box, then you may move uh, with them. So I could have put two in here, got five, opened that up, moved them to here at least, yeah. and then used maybe another die or some event to maybe move them out. And my plan was then, like, I have so many armies here, so either I go here, but if this gets too hard, I'm just going to march here and try to take this from this direction. That was my, how my plan changed. Originally it was everyone come this way and try to work on these and ignore all of this up here. But when you moved off of there, instantly I was like, squirrel, and was like, I see an opening, and if Thorn's not there, and I kept judging, like, Thorn easily could come out next round, and this could be the biggest, dumbest waste of dice and movement to go in this direction and forget about this, because this is like, you know, probably was easier to take. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I might have had to force to try to take that. So, like, it was risky, I think, pushing there, and then going up there, and uh, my dice really messed with me. If I had more um, army and character, then I could have moved this army in and maybe like kind of helped out or move them down here to protect. But leaving myself kind of thin, I thought maybe even you could fight in with this, have Gandalf join these guys. They could take back here. So even if I was up here working on this, I didn't think I could get through it the first round of attacking. Well, even with only one guy there? Because the six fortification, trying yeah. to get six dice with but, you having cards but and abilities. But with only rolling like two die, but still you're gonna damage. have a lot more chances. Yeah, I know, I know, and that's why I was looking at the, the fast movement to see if I could bring guys along and or like maybe just move them once and then do a fast movement to here picking up guys along the way. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was interesting. Uh, it was definitely cool. Like uh, this is the third or fourth time we played it this week, and every single time we play. My game plan from the beginning just changes. Like, I have my eyes on one location or another, and based on card play or Mel's decisions or what, what happens for me or what mustering tokens I flip uh, or what happens in a battle, you know, if I need to recover, lick my wounds, back off, I always end up taking different positions mm -hmm. and different battles happen on the map in different places and different characters are involved or not. Sometimes I kill Gandalf. Sometimes Gandalf really makes an impact. Sometimes... Uh, Bard doesn't even get to play the game. He's already eliminated very fast. Um, it, it, it changes. Like It's so different. So different. Sometimes I have a ton of armies moving along really fast. Sometimes I build up, build up, build up, and I'm not getting dice to get them moving or cards to get them moving. So it's kind of a build up bigger, but um, slower moving large armies uh, in groups, or it's usually faster, smaller armies coming across or somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this game is super cool. This is like, I think like our probably eighth or ninth time playing it, but I always said this before, even when we played it years ago, was like, even though it seems like lesser than War of the Ring, it's still like getting a good few hours of play. Variability is there, even though there's not as many cards and not as many dice and all these kind of things happening, but man, it's still fun. Still fun, even with the dice in combat. Uh, Mel, what was going through your head during that like plays and what you saw happening? If there was any moments of like secret that were happening in your brain that you were hoping for or trying to play with or what frustrated you or what you liked i, I anything any thoughts um, well first that, that i guess i didn't know or the chat didn't know because of hidden cards or hidden you know hidden hidden plans yeah first to answer bob's question about why these two guys here that start here why did i move them up instead of back and i did i did that for the reason of uh the archery ability so I move them this way because then they're in the mountains. And if I could get three of them, they're going to be shooting on things before, um, like with the archery ability, before hopefully they can attack me. Yeah, because this, this is a swamp. So yeah. they, those, and those lake men aren't involved in that ability unless they're in the hills or a mountain. Yeah, so even if I move them back here to Dale, they can't, they can't yeah. do that ability. So I thought moving them up. It condenses them as well. So now I have three of them that are firing on anything that comes like this way and it, and or it even up this me, way. It deters me from taking a weaker army there and trying to take it while it's weak. Yep. Because you actually put five full guys in there. They're rolling tons of dice. Um, and that just adds to the dice rolls. Yeah. Uh, even though, even without them, you got the extra 
Uh, you got lucky with the, with two... the big dwarfs in there because even if you didn't move them in there, you just still been rolling five dice in combat. True. Which is True. crazy. And then the other thing I was thinking was it's very hard for me to recruit up there. I, there's nothing that lets me put recruitment tokens there. So it would have been hard if I didn't bring them in, let's say, Rob can easily come in and, or not easily, but it's easier for him to come and take that. Where I thought if I put these five here, it at least protects that. It's the easiest place for me to, to recruit is in the camp, which I was, I was doing. And then the other thing that happened, so when I moved them to, to the Runes of Dale Yeah, that back, was weird too. Why I did that is you didn't have any die that could have, because these guys didn't have leadership on them. Yep. They couldn't have moved in here by themselves by your die. I didn't realize that you had an event that could move them, which I guess that's fair. But based on your die, you couldn't. I had one token on here with a general. I think I had whoever I had on here. And I knew that the event I was going to play or, or the um, Dane's, I, ability. Dane's ability would have put another token there. And then the die I would have flipped and I would have had two guys there. That's, so then I would have two guys and yeah. a leadership guy. So that was in my head why I thought, okay, I think based on your die, I can chance this. But I didn't realize your event was going to do that. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of events. You, you even had one that they picked two armies and move them up to two spaces. Yeah. I could have even moved this one uh, into here. If I had if that you card. had that, but I guess you have I was, to assume like I if, guess if I have I, to assume that you have that stuff, but I didn't but again, at the time. Like, yeah, as soon as I have, if I have an event, uh, event die, or uh, I think in that one I would need, um, I think it's army, uh, army result. I think that card can fire off. Yeah. So uh, that's in my head what I was doing. Oh I no, thought... it's a character. Oh uh, no, sorry, never mind. Uh, nope. Yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, it's character die, actually. Oh, so you did have leadership on it, sorry, but I don't think you had a die to move that, that them. Yeah, so they did have leadership, because I, I always put leadership on them, because I was thinking they might attack here and need the yeah. die roll. And having leadership on armies means usually cards can give bonuses to them. Usually you can, you know, move or muster where there's leadership or, you know, get extra actions for leadership. Not just the re-rolling, it's also, it like unlocks card abilities usually. Yeah, so that was my plan with the camp, and then I thought if I can, if he didn't move his guys in here, the next turn I would have had two guys here plus a character, and I would have just kept building up this one, so then I would have had these guys, and then I would have been protecting here. Now, when I saw that that flipped, and I realized, oh, that was a big mistake that I had made, I, in my hand, had cards that I could in, uh, recruit up here in um, Raven's Hill. I could have put in um, two wood spearmen and one wood uh, wood. Archer, so I would have had four guys back up here, which is why I thought, okay, let's quickly move these guys here. But I didn't, I knew I couldn't move them fast enough, but I was, I was trying, I was trying. So that was all I could have done, I guess. I don't know. There was, there was also the time where I wanted to move a few of these guys across the mountain so they could still do their archery ability um, and then be closer, which I should have done in hindsight now. I should have moved some of them also because. I knew that Thorin was going to bring more recruits there. And at this point, if you look, like he only has this left over here, and it's going to take him a little bit to get them up and, a, and across an attack. And then with the fortification, I thought, okay, ah, oh, yeah, I should have now, hindsight, I should have done it. But yeah, that was, I guess, my bad. Cool. But my biggest mistake was here. Uh, let us know if you have any other questions. I see, um, need my kebabs. Mm, kebabs. Mm -hmm. uh, so next time we get to see Rob play to try to get Bjorn and Mel play Bolg. Yes, we already talked about this before the stream. Uh, again, later this year, the Rings of Power is coming to Amazon based in the, you know, Lord of the Rings, kind of same world, Middle Earth or whatever. Um, so I am going to know, I know how I get, like when Game of Thrones was on or if, you know, Star Wars movies are out, I always want to come home and play games that are in that IP. To kind of like just get dive get in. excited. I right? love getting into an IP. Like you know, I get obsessed with the, co the comics, the books, the shows. I just dive deep, right? Like I start playing games and I get in that mood. Um, so I know when that show comes out later this year, I'm gonna want to pull out all these different, uh, you know, Tolkien uh, games. Like you know, War of the Ring. We might play around that time. We'll put some of the stuff on polls uh, around the September time frame this year. Is the plan? I'll throw this on a poll too, or if we have the time, we can play it again. Um, but the advantage this game has over Lord of the Ring that I like is it's easier to read the rules of this game and get it to the table and it doesn't take as long and doesn't take up as much table space and as many components. So it's like you can still get that feeling of the combat and the battling and the moving dudes around and the card play and all that stuff and the dice uh, action selection mechanic, whatever. 
in this game in a smaller bite size it's still a big bite though mm -hmm. um but i do like this game i still get kind of that feel but i do love war the war of the ring better obviously it's more of an epic experience but you a you have to it takes longer to relearn that game get it back to the table you have to have another player willing to do that and it does take practice games like this does too to get back into the strategy and understand what to be doing in the game i feel um but i feel like this you can jam out a game in a weeknight but war of the ring maybe not so much in my mm -hmm. opinion yeah, it takes a lot longer. Yeah, like we're able to usually play these in like two or less hours. 90 minutes to two hours, we can usually spin through a game of this off camera, not describing rules and every choice and actions, everything, even even thinking through turns and stuff, um, which is pretty cool. So I do like that aspect of it. Uh, and I'm glad it's in my collection, also with War of the Ring, because I feel like they both are similar, but you know, they both fit different time frames, I guess. Um, but yes, we might play it again later. We've already talked about it. It will be a game we talk about later in September this year uh, that might make it back to the channel. If it does, I will play as the opposite side and we'll just switch sides and have another playthrough. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, of course. Uh, helps other people find the video. Obviously, if more fans of this game come around, you know, and maybe they'll vote for it on the polls or whatever. Um, the people voting on the polls probably will just be our Patreons and our YouTube members, people who financially support us here and allow me to do this full-time allow Mel to join us, allow us to buy games like this uh, and travel to conventions to buy those games and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so if you want to get in on that, uh, support us around that time. And uh, yeah, you guys can uh, help decide what, what gets played on the channel in that month because we have games like Lord of the Rings Living Card Game, uh, Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth, big epic game. We have Lord of the Rings Confrontation, uh, you know, this game, War of the Ring, other games too, I, I you know, many other games based on the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings properties that we'll put on polls or decide to play. Uh, you know, maybe we'll play through a campaign of Lord of the Rings LCG at that time or something, or some standalone scenarios or something. Um, but you guys can decide. But this is a game I played a little early because I really wanted to play this back in like December, but it just kept getting pushed. And then again, because we played the Hobbit campaign, which is linked down below in Lord of the Rings, the living card game, I really want to get this out on the table as I just read the Hobbit book while we were right before we played that campaign. So I was all into the Hobbit and was kind of understanding more of the Battle of Five Armies. Um, so it was cool. So that's why I'm playing it now. But yes, it could appear on the channel later this year, so subscribe. Uh, so you can find your way back where we may play this again on the channel. If we do, it'll be down in the video description. There's a playlist link. Uh, and you can find it in that playlist when we do schedule it and or play it. So if you're watching this in like three years or whatever, it should be linked down there in the video description. If it's not, then we haven't played it yet. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, so uh, Yogi's asking so is Rob going to mention how he ordered the $1,200 collector's version of this game I would definitely never, not I would never no. overpay for the collector's edition of this game but again this game doesn't hit the table enough uh, and we have so many games that are like this and we don't even play competitive two player games that often like we pull them out oh, like one a year maybe it feels like uh, Maybe a out, couple a year. Out of the big epic ones. Yeah, like oh Rebellion, yeah. War of the Ring, this one. Um, but even competitive games in general, it's we still play them here, but it's not like we play the same one the same year that often. We usually right. play one, you know, play it a couple times and put it back on the shelf. And then, you know, so this one may hit the channel again later this year. But again, I don't play it enough that I would ever want the full upgraded version. And I have an amazing painter that I live with here uh, that I married. Not knowing she was an amazing painter, but that, that became icing on the cake later. Uh, so she could always paint this version. And that really, the painted miniature is the only real thing I care about. I don't care about the bigger box, the bigger cool board, and the bigger cards and all that crap. I'm still playing the same game, still having fun. Still getting the same experience, the same amount of time and fun with it. So uh, the cosmetic upgrades of the Collector's Edition, I don't need it. If I could find a decent copy of War of the Ring Collector's Edition, I might buy that, but again, that's just because I like that game better. But again, that game doesn't hit the table enough. That was the game on my longest game on my shelf of shame uh, for so many years that we finally got played on the channel. Last year, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. I will link the War of the Ring playthrough down below uh, after the stream. I forgot, I think, to link that one down there. Um, but if you're looking for that, I'll link it down below in the uh, playlist section. or uh, You should be able to find that there if you're looking for a playthrough of, of War of the Ring. Or again, you can just search on YouTube, Rob's Gaming Table. Uh, War of the Ring, and you should be able to find our epic playthrough, which many people watch. That was so yeah, fun. That was crazy. Uh, again, I do want to play that game in the future, probably around September time. Uh, I'm assuming it, even if I put it on a poll, there's going to be, based on the amount of messages and comments and <laughs> stuff we get, people want to see that game again on the channel. Uh, so we might play that game again, two player with some expansions involved. 
And I know there's an expansion supposed to be coming out for a newer one. That I think got delayed or something. Uh, but yeah, we haven't played with any expansions yet. So yeah, my shelf of opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Um, but again, this game was funny. We played this game, uh, Battle of the Five Armies, as soon as we got it. Started playing it a bunch you know, throughout a couple of weeks. And then we're going to make a video. And we're just like, the, vi the, the timing of trying to get the day to play the video and film the video and all that just never happened. But we played it a whole bunch when we got it and loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it got put back on the shelf. So it was never one that I was like, oh, I haven't played it yet. It wasn't sitting there in a shrink. It had been played a bunch of times. Just uh, never made a video Just for never it. made a video. So this game wasn't on the shelf of shame. So that's why it also took so many years for me to play it. But once I saw they were reprinting this game with a new revision... Uh, just this last, uh, you know, late 2021, I thought, hmm, there's a Lord of the Rings show coming. This game just got reprinted. It's a new, a new revised version showing up in stores. So it's like, it's relevant again. I can play it. And, and then people started asking for this recently. Um, so I thought it was a good time to play it. So it's funny how, how things work out. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Uh... So Walkdogger says, when you play War of the Ring, are you going to play with the Fate of Erebor? I'd like to see a playthrough with the map tiles and new cards. We don't have the Fate of Erebor, I don't think. That was the mini expansion that came with the new version of this. Again, the version we played today was the original printing from 2014. I don't have the newer version. I don't care to ever own the newer version. So just keep that in mind. But you get an idea of how the game works. So if you go buy it, you might get that expansion for it. That's neat <coughs> that they do that. Which is neat, yeah. Yeah. And again, I don't know what's different between the revised version. We asked on the chat earlier. No one seemed to know. No. Um, I'm sure there's a BGG post that yeah, talks maybe, about maybe, that, I'm yeah. sure. So I don't know what's new in the new version other than what we saw in the news post. Revised rules, new mini expansion. I, I don't know. Oh, they did release it separately. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think we can look into it, but... I'll try to yeah. grab it if, 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 if I can available? find it. Yeah. Like, I don't know how readily available it is. Yeah, because I want to do a playthrough with like all the expansions for where the ring would be fun. Like just get messy with it. Yeah, because I think after we did the original, we talked about doing another playthrough with the expansions yeah. that we owned. But but it's just hard to get that one back to the table like that. It like basically I have I have to like not stream for a while because I end up spending days reading rules, uh, learning the game, watching videos and stuff. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, with War of the Ring, it, it, you know, that's why we were light on streams this week because we were playing every evening, playing this game, trying to make sure we learn it and understand it. Mm -hmm. And I like to play games on the channel when we feel pretty comfortable with them usually. Because um, it makes more of an interesting stream, right? If we know the rules, we know some of the cards, we know the strategy in this kind of game. Yeah. So the same thing with Rebellion, same way with War of the Ring. We basically took like a week off of streaming almost. Not really. We only took like three days, but... Um, but we just like focus on the game and instead of doing other streams and then learning other rules and getting confused uh we've just been playing this game basically for like the last three or four days all week uh war of the ring is even worse like because it takes so long it's hard to play all a full game in one evening so we usually play like half a game one night and then continue the game the next night just for practicing uh just with other things going on and stuff so that's why we don't play war of the ring it's just like we look at the pile of games we look at games we get from publishers games we purchased and things people want to see on the channel and kind of like it's hard to play a game like that that you've already done a video for to like play that over other videos but um it'll, it'll come back to the channel war of the ring for sure i i don't see why it wouldn't just give it time we'll find the right week and uh you know take the time to relearn it and get it back to the table but it is not an easy one just to jump back into and uh, understand it again. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say, though, is that it might be easier to get into it after playing this a few times this week. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it has similar mechanics. Yep. So, so again, that's Battle of the, uh, the Battle of the Five Armies, The Hobbit, by Ares Games, designed by the same designers of War of the Ring. It's like mini War of the Ring, uh, slightly less complex, slightly less rules, slightly less cards, smaller table, a uh, smaller board, smaller cards. Um, but a lot of similar mechanics, same foundation. Um, but like it says in the beginning of the rule book for this game, even though you know War of the Ring, still read the rule book because there's a lot that's different. Um, but it still gives you that same feel, just in a, a more zoomed in scope, right? It's not the whole epic Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, three volumes all happening in one board game. Uh, it's just the little part at the end of the, the Hobbit, you know, the little battle of the five armies, little, little battle <laughs> of the five armies. Uh, so it's more zoomed in uh, and tighter and more about the fighting and stuff, um, but it's cool. 
Anyways, uh, yeah, Daniel, uh, I'm not sure. Soon, maybe. Uh, I'm just waiting for Mel to paint. Yeah, I'm working. Mel's working through a couple games right now before I can put certain games on a list uh, to vote for. And I know based on a vote, uh, Mel could then prioritize one game over another, but she's close to finishing a couple games. So I'd rather not leave those off the voting or like have her the, uh, us have to wait after voting on a poll to then say it'll be a couple weeks while Mel finishes painting said game that won the poll. Yeah. So I'd rather just wait and then we'll put some games on a poll. So uh, we, we still need to decide our next epic campaign game to play on the channel. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Our Patreons and YouTube members will be able to vote on that um, and kind of pick the next campaign game we dive into. But there's a few that we're kind of looking at right now. So uh, some have painted miniatures we need to paint. Some miniatures are already painted and some don't have miniatures to paint. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, we'll figure that out soon. And yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for hanging out. This was fun. It was a, it was a fun one to learn this week. Yeah. Uh, and get back to the table for the first time in like eight years. This feels like a theme lately on the channel. Pulling out old games that we got when we around when we were getting into the hobby and some of the first games we really dove into uh, to finally have videos for them uh, when I had more than just a crappy little camera and no lights and no microphones and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's nice to have you know thanks you to your support uh, through super chats, donations, all that stuff. You can find links in the video description for that. But thank you to your support for allowing us to purchase games, get all the cool equipment and cameras and microphones and uh, you know internet connection to be able to stream in 1440p and. Uh, build a nice computer to actually handle these streams and stuff uh, to actually bring a game out like this that I thought we we're gonna play in very poor lighting on a very poor resolution camera probably upload it to YouTube maybe in HD back in the day in 2014 I don't know if that was common at that time but now we're able to play this game where it's like nice sharp I feel good about it uh, so it's really cool these games like Lord of the Rings LCG that like I thought we're never gonna make it to the channel because like you know time had passed there was new stuff and you know we'll never get to play them Mm -hmm. Um, but here we are. Yeah. And Ares decides to reprint the game, and FFG decides to reprint and repackage Lord of the Rings LCG. Blew me away, both of them. Um, so here we are playing it again, and this is super cool for me. Really nostalgic. Brings me right back to those early days. Uh, so fun, so fun. So yeah, still a great game. Holds up today. Uh, I think yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. Little, I love dudes on a map. I love area control in games. I love combat with card play. Yeah, there's still dice. But I do love the card play. I love that whole like Fury of Dracula, Game of Thrones 2nd Edition kind of card play mechanic uh, during combat, which is really cool. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.